Chase, did you read my colossal rant on how to social engineer INFPs? Yes, I did. I did read your colossal rant. And uh, I know that that uh, video has not uh, been made available. There's a reason for that. I want to make it right. Um, I actually got permission uh, from uh, somebody today to kind of use them as a scenario uh, for uh, how to social engineer INFPs. And honestly, I'm very happy to uh, have that opportunity uh, to be able to utilize them as an example. But I just really wanted to make it uh, absolutely right. And I wanted to make sure that I had a little bit more of the ENFJ social engineer side, you know, applied to it as well. So, uh, but uh, yeah. Um, and uh, okay, so yes, uh, Maria Jose Gonzalez and uh, Andrew Yang and all of the like. Uh, so this is how this works. Let's talk about the format. Uh, you guys super chat me with who you want to type and I type them basically. If you do not super chat me, then I get to choose who we type and I already know somebody that I would like to type to begin with if that's the case. But I'm definitely happy uh, with going with super chats. Remember how this works? It's kind of like a bidding system. Uh, you do super chat. The highest super chat uh, is the person who gets priority. Although I will say that I will not necessarily get to your super chat because if the show ends and it will end anywhere from 60 to 90 minutes ish, sometimes it go the full 120 minutes, but uh, we'll see how that is, uh, depending if I have something pressing uh, going on and whatnot, then the show may end. But usually I'm like, hey, you know, super chats have ended or whatever, and I have a little thing on the screen that like shows that. So, but just giving you guys a heads up, uh, you know, Highest super chat is whoever gets priority. I may or may not get all get to all of them. I try to get to all of them, but some of them I don't. Uh, so just make sure that you guys can also like re super chat, add more to get even like a higher you know uh, like a higher one. So uh, now I would like to say if by some chance I mistype somebody, which can happen, uh, I actually am keeping a list. There's two people that I know that I have mistyped on the famous person's list. And uh, if you wanna find out uh, where the famous person list is, I'm actually gonna go with the audience right now and uh, we'll figure out where that is. But all you have to do is go to csjoseph.life and then, uh, yay, we're on the, uh, the front page. You click learn and then go to uh, personality types of famous persons right here, this link and personality types of famous person. Choose whichever type you want, uh, but we have people that we have typed on the uh, streams. I would like to mention though, I am very well aware that I mistyped Drake under ISTP. I will be doing that with a specific lecture to him in the very near future. Uh, so be aware of that. I am aware that sometimes I make mistakes, but I'm a TI parent, I correct all of the mistakes. And uh, if it really is a big, big mistake, I'll actually devote an entire lecture to it. So you guys just understand that uh, your uh, your super chats, or your time here is not wasted, basically. So in case for those of you that are concerned about that, um, I just want to like allay all those fears, etc. But yeah, um, this is the uh, this is the page to go to. Uh, Famous personalities. I'm going to put that into the live stream uh, uh, chat as well. So you guys can have that, um, which is pretty dope. Um, and uh, oh my gosh, Sasha Baron Cohen, really? <laughs> I just saw that come in. So uh, thank you all for the uh, super chats, folks. I really appreciate that. Um, Starry Nights is in tonight. That's great. Uh, and uh, Basic Betty's here. That's cool. Leanne Lissenberger, thank you for coming. Kevin Chen, my man from, uh, uh, my main man. And then uh, let's see who else we got uh, joining us tonight. Larry David, it's going to be a great night. I can already tell it's gonna be a great night. So, um, but cool. Uh, thank you all for the super chats and uh, let's get down to business folks. Uh, let's get down to business. So I'm gonna pull up Discord right here. Actually, no, I'm gonna, Look at the list here. So I'm gonna keep a um, let's uh, let's get that notepads up here. I'm gonna close this one here. Let's get into some of these. Jennifer Lawrence. Um, okay, 
is. So looks like we have Amy Lee. Um, and it's $24.99. And then we have Larry David at $20. Uh, and uh, we'll see where we go from there. Oh, Shane Dawson uh, at $19.99 as well. Uh, and then uh, and Hillary Duff at $14.99. So we'll just keep tracking from there as people uh, get things figured out there. Ooh, and Brandy with Meghan Markle at the top, of course. She's been asking for this one for a long time. Thank you, Brandy. Uh, much, very much appreciated. Uh, so, cool. All right. Meghan Markle it is. Let's get down to business, shall we? Um, so... Um, again, uh, Markle interview 20, let's do a 2018, let's do a 2018, let's see where this goes. Uh, full interview, um, grateful to be a part, I want her by herself, um, a Rachel, uh, learn what real name is, okay, you could do that, uh, for, Joint dating uh, interview, engagement interview. There's a lot of different interviews here, so I'll get down to it. So, um, okay, here. Congratulations to you both. Thank you. Can we start with the proposal and the actual moment of your engagement? When did it happen? How did it happen? Uh, it happened uh, a few weeks ago, mm. um, earlier this month, here at, at our cottage. Um, just a standard, typical it's night a for us. It's a cosy night. Uh, was, what were we doing? Just roasting chicken roasting and having... Roasting chicken. <laughs> trying to roast chicken. <laughs> trying to roast a chicken. And it was just, a, uh, just an amazing surprise. It was so sweet and, and natural and very romantic. He got on one knee. <laughs> of course. Was it an instant yes from you? Yes. As a matter of fact, I could barely... Wow. You gotta like uh, Prince Harry. He's like, of course, of course, I took a knee because I am introverted sensing. I am so honorable. I am the most honorable prince, obviously, most honorable prince of the British Empire, right? You know, even though I'm like saying this in like a French accent, if you know what I'm saying. But I mean, like, why not, right? Like, like, why not? So, we'll uh, we'll get down to it, right? So. Prince Harry, good old Prince Harry. You know he's he's the, he's the dopest, right? But then you got the Meghan Markle person here. Let's. Uh, I want to get something else. Like, come on. I don't want to know royal speech. So grateful to be a part of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's do some Rachel Ray here. Let's see what Rachel Ray has to okay, say. Okay, but we should talk about suits too. Oh it's yeah. Already been picked up for its fifth season. Yeah. Which is great. It's really cool. And the character's name is Rachel, which is great. <laughs> and do you know that my names? first name is Rachel in real life? Did you know that? I had no idea. <laughs> so I was born Rachel Meghan Markle, but my parent, I know, it's kismet. All right, so like she completely initiated that out of nowhere. Like, hey, did you know that my real name was Rachel? You know, because like she's initiating, so awesome. We're gonna be, we're gonna be doing some green tonight. Get some of that initiating down as, uh, as we're going for it, so. I am drifting German. Thanks, Brandy, uh, for that. I, I appreciate that. Um, interviews pre Prince Harry to avoid royal household scripts. I agree, Cherry. Uh, get me some uh, specific uh, 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 interviews to go for. I want to do it right. So, Cherry, if you can actually like post some links and whatnot, I'd appreciate it. That'd be dope. Um, let's get down to it. So, yeah, very initiating. And I gotta say, you know, given her visuals, definitely an SE and I user uh, specifically. And it's like, hey, you know, we have the shared experience of having the same name, et cetera. So SE and I user, definitely initiating. Uh, so like if you're an SE and I user and you're initiating, that means you're like ESTP, ENTJ, ESTP, ESFP, you know, basically as an SE and I user for, um, you know, the extroverts. So it's like one of those four types. So she's, so like if we know if we find out she's informative initiating movement just like right off the bat because she could possibly informative initiating movement we automatically know she's an ESFP you know what I'm saying so which I suspect might actually be happening here but uh, 
we'll get it down to it. Uh, so, um, okay, nice. Let's keep going on this uh, interview. <laughs> I know. You have to let me do like a guest bloggy uh, advice Please. editorial thing Ask on this. Rachel, I would love yes, it. we gotta do yes. it. $40 a day in world oh, travel. Please. I've been following you from the very beginning. Oh I'm so excited. Yes, it's uh, good. Rachel, you're nice. Yes. In the show, it's a paralegal who's trying to pass the bar, but I did not know until today you're Smarty McSmarty in politics. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, I studied um, international relations and theater, and then I just got involved in our version of politics in the entertainment industry. I mean, just doing acting. It's but did you ever... I just got involved in our version of politics within the uh, entertainment industry. That's a very SE statement because it's talking about the shared experience, et cetera, uh, of the entertainment industry as a whole. Get a job working in politics? I used to work for the U.S. Embassy in Buenos Aires, and um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, it, it was a, another life. Let's say I've had nine but lives. That's but so it's, cool. Yeah, it's been really great. And now to sort of parlay that, I work pretty closely with UN Women now, and so it's it's full circle. I'm just really, I'm so, so lucky. I'm so you so got grateful. to have literally all of these different dreams kind of come true at the same time. Yeah. I can't complain about anything. No, it's <laughs> fun. What's next on your, on your bucket list? Do you have one of those, a travel bucket list or a life bucket list? You know, right now, because we're on hiatus from the show and we start filming again. Right now, we're on hiatus for the show. Um, let's see. Also an extra uh, extroverted sensing as well. Again, the first week of April. Mm -hmm. So um, I leave straight for the airport from here, and I go to London. Then I'm going to Malta, which I'm wow. so excited about. Then I'm going here. Then I'm going here. Then I'm going here. Then I'm going here because, like, I'm an obvious introverted intuitive. Yeah, okay. Fair enough, because like introvert intuition is all about my future, my future. SC and I got that on lockdown. You know what I'm saying? All right, so let's keep going. About my great great grandmother's from Malta. How I've wonderful. never been, so I'm going with a genealogist. That's sort so of like cool. Track, yeah. and track it down. I went to the apartment that my going with a genealogist i'm not sure if that's a ti or te statement that could be a fact or but i'm not sure it's like any about her self-aggrandizement gosh she almost seems like stp nfj quadra a little bit not sure but uh we'll, we'll verify that it's just getting real interesting grandfather was born in Angela in, in in sicily oh outside of agrigento was it, it was incredible one of the best times yeah. of my life yeah i'm really looking forward to oh. that so like squeeze it all in and then we start filming we film for nine months so then right back in the swing of things and, uh, that's so great i mean so few shows make it to a fifth season and picked up from the oh. fourth already and for the fifth is fantastic yeah. Seems kind of direct. I'm kind of learning more towards the direct side of things. I haven't really seen much informative, and she's constantly talking about outcome versus outcome versus outcome. It's not about process. It's like here's this event, and then here's this event, and then here's this event, and then here's this event. All right. So that tells me that tells me control, folks. I'm gonna have to put one down for direct initiating control. S E N I. That would basically mean E S T P E N T J E N F J. We're still going to verify against ESFP, but like, oh gosh, guys, I'm just not really seeing, you know, that whole Valley Girl ESFP approach with my communication style, just saying, you know what I'm saying? So like, not really leaning towards, uh, not really leaning towards ESFP. I, gosh, I, I just not seen it. Like, it's more of a TIFE thing. So let's, uh, let's see if there's some older um, interviews to go for. Let's see here. Um, again, Markle. 2017. Let's try that. Uh, it's something, something older, you know. Okay. Uh, talks, suits, TV show, interview. Uh, creative Cultivate Atlanta. Okay, sure. Let's do something from 2016. I'm I think when you're really like grateful for those little things and you don't lose sight of that is when you can enjoy it, you know, and that's the point. I, I'm pretty certain the whole point is to just enjoy this silly in. little yeah. life ride that we're Let's just enjoy this silly little life ride and be grateful. I mean, that kind of sounds like an extroverted feeling statement, if you ask me. That kind of seems like a, an F-E-T-I thing, but let's verify. Let's keep going. Roll on. It is 
it's so wonderful to have you today. Thank you so much. It's good to be here. I just flew in last night. Hi, yeah. guys. <laughs> you guys seem like you're having so much fun. When I walked through, I was like, there are beauty treatments. Everyone's drinking. <laughs> yeah. Cocktails, nails, done, <laughs> yeah. done. Success. Um, you're very... There's beauty treatments and everyone's drinking. Okay, cool. You know, it's very initiating. Fair enough. Busy, so we appreciate your time. Oh, thank you. Uh, let's talk about the TIG. Yeah. So you said the name represents the moment where you got it. Talk a little bit about that moment. Yeah, I mean, I think we all have catalyst moments in our life. And for me, when I uh, started the TIG, the namesake for it was after this glass of wine. It's a, it's a type of wine called Tignanello, but in the States they sort of butcher the name and say Tignanello. And it was my first time having a, a sip of this wine where I wasn't just like, it's red wine or it's white wine. It was a moment of, oh, this is different. Oh, I get it now when people talk about the legs or the body or the structure of something. So for me, it was a, a pivotal moment because it was seeing the nuance in something that I had never seen before. So the TIG then became my personal nickname of all those aha moments of getting it in a more profound way than you had before. Granted, it was just about a glass of Talking about the TIG, which is an expert in sensing totemic creation. She had a totemic experience with this wine. Basically, it's another form of uh, expert sensing, psychometry, attaching a memory specifically to a physical object. So uh, definitely more expert in sensing. Her expert in sensing is obviously an optimistic function. So again, like I said, we're looking at... Uh, ESTP, uh, ENTJ, and then uh, ENFJ. But honestly, guys, I'm just not really seeing it for ENTJ at this point. Uh, so pragmatic versus a field tip is going to be a little bit interesting, uh, as well as uh, I think I think she's definitely interest in terms of what people are getting out of the situation because she did state, you know, hey, everyone's you know having a beer here, you know, everyone's you know getting drunk, you know. Uh, you know, getting some beauty treatments going on. So she's definitely aware of what people are getting out of situations. So I'm going to say that's pretty interest-based. It's wine, but it ended up transcending itself into something much bigger for me, which is what I've used as, um, as a platform for the website. Anything that has to do with wine, fan, fan. <laughs> Thank you. You've also said it took a long time to find yourself. We were talking actually a little bit earlier today with Nikki Reed about casting rooms. You're getting basically fired every single day. People telling you no every single day. It's, it's, it's intense. Yes. Um, <laughs> I want to talk a little bit yes, about your I'm experience initiating. in the casting room and, and, and your experience as a diverse woman yeah. in the casting room. I mean, I think what's so interesting is, um, you know, I'm born and raised in LA, so that in and of whoop, itself. Whoop. Are you? LA. Oh my, where'd you go to high school? Oh wait, I didn't go to high school in LA, but we'll get back to that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wait, tables turn. Now it's like, well, you do like an interview for the TIG. Where did you go to high school? What's it. your favorite food? Um, no, so look, because I'm from LA, I often say it's like if you're from a small coal mining town, maybe you're going to end up getting into coal mining. I was brought up in the entertainment industry, so it was a very comfortable environment for me. Um, but at the same time, I think what became abundantly clear very early on is that beyond just the nature of how competitive trying to have a career as a professional actress is, because I'm biracial, I was able to get into so many more rooms because they didn't exactly know where they could put me. But with that said, I heard no so many more times than you would if you could only go in for the blonde haired, blue eyed girl, right? If you can go in for that role. Very interest based talking about uh, biracialism and the, and the uh, struggles within the entertainment industry as a result. It's also TIFE facts, uh, constantly talking about facts and how people have different value systems based on the color of your skin, et cetera. It's not so much uh, like a precedent setting or talking about laws. That is more of a, it's more of a social issue. So it seems more FE as a result, direct initiating and control. I am not really seeing much abstraction here, uh, which would be interesting because then we have an ESTP, which is pretty dope actually, Meghan Markle being an ESTP's I, that sounds fantastic, quite frankly. I love me some ESTP, if you know what I mean. So, um, you know, because, like, I'm married to an ESTP. So, anyway, um, let's, uh, let's, let's keep going here. And maybe you have five auditions a week. If you can go in for the exotic Caucasian girl and the ethnically ambiguous girl 
and the black girl and the white girl and the Latina girl, which at the time I remember there's a breakdown that said, like, it was always like the sassy Latina girl. I was like, oh my God, but I'm not Latina. Um, yeah, that's just constantly talking about the what is. It's just concrete, 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 very what is, uh, talking about all these facts and whatnot. So yeah, there you have it, folks. Meghan Markle is definitely an ESTP. So there you go. So awesome. All right, let's move on to the next one here. Yes, I did get married to Railgun, for those asking. Guess it would make sense that an ESTP would be named Railgun, right? So let's check out what we got. Uh, going into, cool. And then we have Super Chats. Holy smokes. All right, that's a lot of Super Chats, guys. Thank you very, very much. Um, Mega Markle is done. So we're gonna be moving down to the next one. Uh, let's see here. I'm actually going to delete that one there. And the next one, according to the list, is uh, Valentina uh, Lisitsa. Lisitsa? Lisitsa? Um, so, all right, cool. And uh, Valentina Lisitsa. Okay, sure. We'll do that. Um, Valentina Lisitsa interview. Okay. Awesome. Interview, 145K, eight years ago. That sounds cool. We'll do that. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Delighted to be here for your dear money. Well, I was listening. It's just one of the most exciting chases I've ever heard. Very, very exciting. Yes, it's exciting, yet it's very intense emotionally. Yeah. yeah. But it, it, it is. It's not a it's dimension. very exciting, but it's very intense because I'm direct, in, direct in, AF. In dynamics, but also in speed and rubato. It's really I'm wonderful. I'm a very visual person, so I, I, I could do a movie, but I'm not going to tell what it is about. <laughs> Maybe one day. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, actually, the, yes, yeah, the, the clip of this piece on YouTube, which was made by wonderful videographer, by the way, cinematographer Ali Habashi. That was our student years back in Miami. So that was a little like the best viewed viral clip. And that's how I started on YouTube. Uh -huh, because okay. it was such a runaway success. Uh -huh, because I said already in my announcement that this uh, clip is over 900,000 viewers yeah. now. You, you know, it's, the quality there is not so perfect. No. You can see, you know, when people know the piece, it's not even synchronized. Mm -hmm. Because we were using different cameras. It was all student production. It was not done completely professional, not like here in studio, but yet there was something about it that attracted lots of attention from people, you know, people not musicians, and they were looking and I was... It attracted a lots of attention from people. There's something about it that brought that there. It's very S-E-N-I. Looking at comments, you know, how people felt about this piece, and of course I was extremely flattered. <laughs> <laughs> but you have a lot of fans, I guess, or what? Yeah, but still, you know, every time I have to prove with this piece, especially in comments for the first year about the comments, were, oh, this is a recording which is sped up on video, <laughs> right? <laughs> but that was always a story, because technique is given me in such an easy way that it's not difficult for mm -hmm. me, okay? So I have to pretend that it's difficult. <laughs> And even when my recordings were out without videos, so people would say, oh, it's all, you know, edited, re-edited, and it cannot be like that. And then we decided to make video to prove that I... And then we decided to make the video, and I'm also very movement-oriented. Very, very, very movement. Always explaining. Uh, kind of seems very concrete uh, with how she's going about it, so we'll see how that goes, and uh, let's continue. 
but I can play like yes, that. Okay. And then people started saying, but it's sped up. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> but the whole YouTube purpose was actually, you know, so people could see, because at that point, we being naive, because we had no idea about videography and possibilities of it. We thought if you see video, it's not as edited, you know, with 800 takes per minute as audio is nowadays. Mm -hmm. So that was the whole idea. But nevertheless, you're very popular on YouTube. Yes. And how is it in concert life? I have so many YouTubers coming to my concerts, <laughs> just popping out, and they come from different countries. Like I had, I played concerts here in Holland, and people from Hungary would come. You know, people from Japan. It's so wonderful. Every people come from Japan. People come from here. I'm gonna, I'm going to say that she's a T user. She's not really doing QI facts. It's very F I T E, and I'm going to say S F P and T J Quadra so far. I'm going to watch a little bit more to verify, but I'm really seeing that that's the case. Uh, so far. Having so many fans, I thought, well, maybe it's now time for your own uh, uh, soap or what, you know, your re reality soap. Re your I actually, home. I had a reality show. For a week I was running camera, 24 hours a day. It Where? was on. In your? In my own studio over summer. Because people ask me, okay, how much do you practice? What do you do for fun? Well, I do nothing for fun. I practice for fun. And I practice between 12 and 14 hours, it's normal for me. And people wouldn't believe it. So I put web camera, and it was webcast directly. You know, with everything, you know. Uh -huh. I, I would just go out, get coffee, okay. have lunch. And it was constant camera on for one week. I, ho I hope that it will inspire, you know, students <laughs> to go and practice more. Instead, they were sitting and watching the camera. <laughs> so it was kind of silly. Well, you, so you, you practice 12 to 14 hours a day? Whenever I have chance. I first chance. Would you like your hands on the table for me for a moment? Okay. Flat, yes. Together? Together, put this okay. Away. Okay. And could you describe your hands for me? Well, there are 10 fingers and... <laughs> hmm, they're quite muscular. I call them little Schwarz. <laughs> They're ten fingers. They're quite muscular. I call them little Schwarzeneggers. <laughs> That's a little bit of a se uh, embarrassment, a little bit with how they're showing out, a little bit. Kind of sounds a little se inferior if you were to ask me. A little bit te as well. Gonna do some uh, se there, but uh, probably some se inferior. That's a good chance of that. Um. Uh, is it the best way to do something? She's being, uh, you know, very, uh, with how she handles practice. I'm going to say systematic, guys. It's, so far, that's what I'm seeing. I'm going to look at another interview, though, just to uh, see what else we could talk about. Um... And Eugenia Zuckerman joins us now. Good morning, Eugenia. Good morning, Charles. Eugenia, we had... Uh... They were each studying to... No, I don't want to watch that one. I had my older brother to compete against because he was quite an accomplished pianist. He was a quite but accomplished so uh, pianist. Was Talking about achievement, that's TE. That I can do it too because, you know, having 10 years difference, I was constant, you know, subject of abuse of all kinds. <laughs> so did you go straight away to a conservatoire as a young girl or did you start with private lessons? How does it work in here? I went, is, is the system of education was such because most, of course, you know, when you go to music education, most of people, they cannot possibly count on becoming, you know, concert pianists. So yes, that's the idea. But to be realistic, most of those, you know, kids, college kids who went to music, they, they wanted to become music teachers. And because music was taught in schools, in just regular schools, so that was quite enough. Very direct. I'm still, uh, she's still maintaining direct. Uh, and there's a good chance she's responding. Wow, we might be looking at uh, direct responding movement nice here. Do it. That was actually dream of my mom. Oh, that was the best way to do it. Yay, another point for systematic. Love it when we hear those. You know, to, uh, of getting, you know, at least, you know, if I'm total failure, I will get <laughs> to be teacher, music teacher in just regular, you know, primary school, and I will have three months vacation. And, you know, September 1st, all teachers, all, all Parents bring you flowers and chocolate, so it's nice. You know? nice that was a good idea because she wasn't giving in, you know, as a parent, <laughs> you know, bringing chocolates and flowers to teachers. But uh, most of kids were actually going into teaching career, and to better educate them to do it, there were lots of young kids who were given to those beginner students 
the right. bitot immediately, like guinea pigs. So my first lessons were with a very young girl. Of course, she seemed, you know, like grown up lady for me, but I think she probably was like 16 or 17. <laughs> but that was uh, my first musical experience being taught by a piano student. Right, right. So you, I want to talk about your technique. Now, I hope you don't mind me saying, but it's not traditional piano school yes. because you know people try to put you in those boxes and pigeonholes and they say do. Well, people try to put you in boxes in that regard. Yeah, it's again, that's systematic. Uh, it's kind of an abstract way of uh, explaining something as well. And she's really responding. She's not initiating any additional points. She's just having an expository approach to, uh, you know, the interviewer, very responding. So I'm going to put Valentina L down as INTJ. Uh, uh, it kind of seems really obvious to me. She's very responding, especially in this interview. And if you look at the last interview she, she was with, she was kind of like with this INFP behind the scenes guy, forcing her for the sake of the interview to actually cognitive transition and go into an extroverted size aside and initiate more with him because of how behind the scenes he was, uh, kind of forcing him in that situation. But she's definitely movement. She's been movement the entire time. She's also direct. So direct responding movement, you can automatically assume that just right there. So she's chart the course. We already know she's SENI. So if you chart the course, you can only be an ISTP or you can be an INTJ. Um, but uh, the ISTP is more about like, you know, focusing on, you know, mentoring other people, teaching other people. Whereas Valentina the entire time has been about personal achievement and practicing for four, 14 hours and focusing on practice over and over. ISTPs do not necessarily do that per se usually unless they're like some insanely high performance athlete but even then that much dedication from an ni hero standpoint uh being able to put in that much time from a practice standpoint is indicative of an intj actually so putting valentina down as intj uh, for us uh, this evening so let's move on to the next one so And let's look at what super chats we have available now. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Valentin, let's see. Stita. Okay, so deleting that one. Awesome. So uh, we got $24, $24.99. So it looks like Amy Lee is next on the list. Amy, um, Amy Lee. Well, yeah. She's donated a lot, but again, we're going for the highest one and she donated a lot of different names. So is she going to have me combine everything into one name or, you know, because remember, it's the highest super chat, right? So she can combine everything into one name, right? So that's kind of her approach. I mean, that's what happens, you know, when they're like an ENFP, right? So, um and be like, yo, you know, Chase, you need to do the right thing, et cetera. Right, Lev? You know, Chase, you need to do the right thing. Well, Lev, I did say the instructions were like, highest super chat gets priority, right? So maybe people should do the right thing and super chat accordingly, right? Don't be holding me to that super high affiliative moral standard of yours unless we understand what the rules are initially. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, Amy Lee of Evanescence. That's fun. I like Amy Lee. Let's do it. Let's do something. Uh, iHeartRadio interview. No, no. Let's talk about more Epicenter 2019. Um, uh, let's see. 2019. Let's do um, Amy Lee, Sharon Danadel. Okay, interview with Arthur K. Behind the Bell of Rope. Okay, let's do that one. Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur K. Welcoming Amy Lee from Evanescence, who has a new children's album called Dream Too Much. Make sure to check it out. Great time behind the Velvet Rope. It's me, Arthur Cade. All right, Amy Lee. Hi. So how does the lead singer of a rock band make 
make a children's album. That's a perfect place to start. How does it happen? I had a kid, so that was cool. It was amazing, <laughs> actually. Very inspiring. It inspired me in a lot of ways. I had a kid. I, you can't get more direct than that. Let's be straight. You know, you, you just you just can't. <laughs> I had a kid. Uh, Amy Lee. <laughs> That's pretty direct. If I ever heard it. Um, musically, and I wasn't totally expecting that. We were singing all the time. He doesn't sing yet. He just repeats things back to me, but he definitely likes the album. Um, Tailor-made to fit his interests. So... So it's like, I have a kid, let me make a children's yeah, album. Yeah, of course. I like um, that. I like that progression. Yeah, I love it. It's cool to be able to do something different, too. I mean, it feels so good um, just to be able to branch out in any kind of different area where you can be creative and not feel like you're stuck to any sort of box set of rules. Box set of rules? I don't know. I like it. It's nice to be creative and kind of go in different, any area you want, you know, and not be stuck to like some box set or rules. That sounds very pragmatic if I've ever heard pragmatic before. Maybe it's a box set of rules. Box set of rules. Evidence has a box set coming out as well. Everyone check it out. Let's plug yeah. it. That's <laughs> it. That, was, that might have been the invested, unintentional, I know, unintentional it was, it was plug totally of all a mistake. time. That's great. Speaking um, of Evanescence, yeah. for those who don't know, Amy Lee's the lead singer of Evanescence. You guys have sold a gajillion albums, and uh, congratulations. So you guys are touring and box setting, and is it crazy to still, after all these years, it's now been, what, 12 years since you were, like, the breakout <laughs> stars of the it's planet? It's been longer, I think. Is it, well, this is 2016. Yeah, it's 04. Right. right. It was 03. Like no it was 03. I was there. 03. 03. Yeah, so you're 13, actually. That's true. In a minute. And we were doing it before then, so... When that all happens, you got to walk me through the process. I remember when you just, you, it was like enormous. Like you had the biggest song on the planet. Like what was it like for you guys? You know, in the moment, you, you don't really, at least for me personally, you don't really absorb it. It's like you're just really, really busy. And there's constantly just as much as like on the outside, like there's great stuff going on. There's like fires to put out. It seems like like five times a day. So you're just like running and going and doing this and doing this and flying to this crazy country and not. You're just going and going and running and doing this and then you're doing this and then you're doing that and then you, 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 and then you do this and then you do that. Extroverted sensing, extroverted sensing, extroverted sensing. She's not saying I did this, she's saying you did this as an example. Not sleeping and playing shows and they just keep getting bigger and then when the tour is over like a year and a half later and you go, <sighs> Then you like turn on your music video and go, wow, did that really happen? That's awesome. So I feel like I. Wow, did that really happen? That's awesome. Extroverted sensing. She's not taking that introverted sensing in with her. SENI so far. Awesome. Wow, she could be an INTJ. She could be an ENTJ. Uh, interesting. We'll see how that goes. Kind of registered all of that a little bit after the fact. Do you guys have any idea? I mean, like, do you walk into it? Do you walk into 03 and are you like, all right, we've got a great song, we've got a great album, or it just hits? Like, how does it work? Um, I think it works different for everybody. I'm sure it does. But um, you just have to really, really, really believe in what you're doing, even when you feel like other people don't. I mean, there's a lot of those moments where you're like, well, I might be crazy. I hope I'm not, but I'm just going to bet it all and just go for this and do this all the time until I hope I'm crazy but uh, I hope not you know that's pragmatic uh, it's also SE and I I'm just gonna go for it take the risk and I from that standpoint not really seeing much outcomes with what you she's know, saying she kind of seems like she's talking about her process consistently so it doesn't work and um, they work for us people were obsessed with you I like was it crazy like I'm thinking to myself like you you're a beautiful woman obviously but but were people like People were obsessed. You were like the sex symbol in music for like what? A, yeah, like men were like a, like. Was it was it, it it was it too much? Like, is it too much attention when it's happening when you achieve that type of level of fame that quickly? Well, I don't remember it exactly that way, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, but that's a, that's but but ever. having a lot of eyes on you and a lot of ears on you, like everything you say and do, all of a sudden at twenty one, you know, is. Everybody's gonna hear it, and forever, you know? It's a lot of extra weird pressure that is, I mean, literally, I turned 21 uh, the day we took that album cover for fall, and that was my 21st right. birthday. Um, 
and all of a sudden it was like there's a microphone all the time, you know? So um, there's, there's a lot of lessons that I think I kind of learned the hard way, but um, I, I feel better now. It took me a minute to adjust. Like that whole thing, it definitely is super weird. How is the Amy Lee different? That whole thing, definitely, it was super weird. Gonna have to go with concrete on this one. Definitely going concrete. She's speaking what is. I'm not really hearing much what if. Today than the 21 year old Amy Lee. Oh. I don't think we have enough time. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, this just turned into a therapy yeah, session. Yeah, uh, I, am, I am the same person, but uh, I mean, I've grown so much since I was 21. Um, learned a lot of things. Learned how to be stronger in the right ways. Um, I think I was a lot more afraid back then. Like, a little more insecure, a little more unsure about my gut instincts. Um, a little bit more unsure about my gun, it gut instincts because, like, I might be NI inferior, but, like, who knows, you know? And I've become, just through trial and error of learning, like, you know, if I had just done it my way in the first place, we'd be better off than we were now in whatever situation, whether personal just or done it my way in the first um, place. Very know, pragmatic. Um, and you learn what you're doing. Very you concrete. Know. So uh, I just sort of learned what I was doing. So, all along. <laughs> so when you're making like a children's album, how right. is that different from you've done initiating, album, right? You've done the Evanescence stuff. How is doing something like a children's album different from everything else you've done? Well, it's super different. I mean, the music is completely different. The the idea of the audience is completely different. Um, the idea of the audience is completely but different. But it's something That's that TIFE I statement. To because I'm relating to my son, and it came from a very natural place of just talking to him, you know, singing about things that he's interested in because it's coming out of his mouth and I don't know where it came from, like making songs like that. I don't know also where it came from, from SCNI. and I. My own childhood. T-I-F-E. It makes you revisit um, seeing the world for the first time. And Being a kid makes you revisit really, the world really for the first time cool. because I'm so SCNI and I and T-I-F-E. Like, all parents probably. STP like, and FJ Quadra. seeing things through a new set of eyes again in a lot of ways and um, Seeing that things through a new right set of like, eyes, because uh, I'm mirroring my child. And my family's in it, and I made a bunch of music with my dad and my sisters and my uncle and my brother. Just really, uh, really an amazing gift to be able to combine my family um, and us hanging out and being a family together like we've always been with my work, you know, and make it a fun project that we could all walk away with together and, and listen to and share forever. I'm really proud of it. It's made my family super happy. Is it like two different? I'm really proud of it, and uh, it's made my family super happy too. That's T I F E. So definitely an S P. She's an S P. The difference is, is like, okay, what is it? Is is she an E S T P, right, or I S T P? Uh, which is it? Are we are we really seeing much movement from her for sure? I mean, she's talking about her process, but uh, she went a little bit outcome oriented. So let's look at let's look at process versus uh, outcome because we know she's direct, right? So let's look at initiating versus responding and look at uh, control versus movement, all right? Worlds now. So if you're on tour with Evanescence and you're playing, obviously, the new stuff, the old stuff, versus this type of the Amy, other end of the Amy Lee world, do you end up living, like, in two worlds? Yeah, it's like my alter ego. It's That's like so funny. darkness rock and roll, and it's like rainbow cupcakes. <laughs> 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 it's so fun to be able to do that because... Just doing the same thing over and over, it's not necessarily it's always the same thing, but kind of, like the same mode, the same mood, the same things, same questions even that people want to ask you. Um, after a while, you're like, oh my gosh, I just want to like do the opposite. I just want to do the opposite for five minutes. It's going to feel really good, and it does feel really good. But it actually kind of makes you better at doing the other thing because you've had that runaway. You ran away from home. You had the outlet. You went crazy. You made a kid's album. It's like, okay, now I'm going through all this, I can't wait to get back on the tour, I can't wait to get back on stage with the band and for the lights to go out and just for the bass to drop, you know? Um, it feels like more complete to be able to go down different paths and be your whole self in different places. Has it surprised you? I mean, we see so many artists. She kept on talking about outcomes there, you know, I can't wait to get, you know, back on the band, just watch the bass drop, etc. It's not really talking about process at all. That's very control oriented. Uh, you know, and she seems like she's kind of like a little bit a little bit on the slower side compared to other people. We are here at Epicenter in Rockingham, North Carolina. It's Grant Random with Amy Lee of Evanescence. What's up? Let's do another. Thanks for, having me. Thanks for uh, coming by. Um, 
What's up? Thanks for having me. That was pretty initiating. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Direct initiating control. The question I want to ask you. So beautiful, like seated theater. So it was more um, about focusing on every note and the performance than like, you know, running around and getting the crowd. It was more about focusing on the, the performance and doing the notes. It's very control because it's very outcome oriented. All right. That's enough for me. ESTP is Amy Lee. Yeah, another ESTP. Kind of interesting how that works. You know, awesome. Oof, let's uh, not uh, do that. There we go. Uh, start erasing uh, some things here and moving on to the next one. All right, let's look at who's next. So Discord, awesome. All right, so we did Amy Lee, gonna be deleting that one. Awesome. Okay, so someone added to Sasha Baron Cohen, so 12 and then uh, 12 plus nine is uh, 21, so 12. 21 so but Johnny Cash is at 24 for in so for introverted feelers so Johnny Cash is next Johnny Cash let's do it all right um what is it with us and STPs tonight you know what I'm saying like I would say he's either an ESTP or an ISTP just off of my first uh uh, figuring out here, you know, ah, oh, Mr. C.S. Joseph, you can't allow yourself to be biased. I'm like, well, that's what happens when you like, I don't know, uh, ask me to type someone I'm kind of familiar with. Uh, interview. Um, let's do a 1960 interview. Sure, we'll do that. And Man in Black. Cool. He's a real man. Fabulous gentleman, Johnny Cash. <laughs> Guy. You're one guy, I bet the public doesn't make a mistake. But usually they see a guy on television and they'll say, hey, you're much taller, you're much smaller. Mm -hmm. You're a big cat. <laughs> well, everybody <laughs> says, you know, they say I look bigger when they see me in person. Yeah, you uh, television is a little deceiving. They right? say I look bigger when they meet me in person. Okay, that's an S-E-N-I statement. And uh, I'm not going to say that's direct quite yet. Johnny, country you music is really soul music, isn't it? Certainly, I think uh, it's, a, it's a, to me it's a lot of soul music. Uh, country music is a big part of the folk music of America. I think probably, you know, a lot of people probably don't appreciate a lot of country music. I suppose I don't appreciate some of it, but a lot of people probably don't appreciate country music. I suppose I don't appreciate some of it as well. Okay, that's very uh, T I F E. I'm gonna say that's concrete as well in terms of like what is um and uh se and i talking about the experiences other people are having uh and it was also a direct statement but let's keep let's keep going we're going to do another interview on him as well to get a contrast between him in the past and him in the future uh, basically i think country music is is our greatest music and probably a hundred years from now the they'll be studying yeah. the students will be studying folk music and yeah. jazz have you ever blues. thought about what makes Country music. I think a hundred years from now, people will be studying it. That was a kind of cool abstract statement. I, I like that. Uh, talk about the what if. And soul music alike. Well, it's uh, it's from down in here, right, that's James? Right. That's, that's right. That's the name of the yeah. game. See, that's the thing that I've always admired when uh, when I see you work is I know that uh, well when you what you transmit through that tube is you, and same thing applies to James. And that's really the name of the game. Do you like country music, James? Yeah, I like country music, but most of all, but the others, you know. I know that your early memories can't... Well, actually, Mike, they are very pleasant. They were uh, kind of lean times, but uh, I wouldn't take a thing, anything for them. I think what I went through as a child and then in some of the harder years coming up in this business made me <coughs> whatever, whatever I am now, whatever that's worth, and... Um, so that's a TIFE statement. He's still very direct, uh, very control. Uh, and uh, STP, NFJ Quadra, 
you'd have to be ESTP or uh, ENFJ at this point, but uh, he's constantly talking the what is. The last thing we said was a concrete statement, which would just make him by default an ESTP. But let's, let's look at uh, another interview. I'm really enjoying it. Are you bitter? I'm the last one that would be angry at God. I would like, I'd, <laughs> I'd really duck if I shook my fist at him. <laughs> what was, do you remember anything about being in a coma? I remember voices in the room. I remember things they were saying and I couldn't respond to. I was in a coma several times with, uh, over the, the periods of time. It I was in a coma several times. It's very uh, T-I-F-E, because stating a fact, but that was an initiation. He was initiating. So direct initiating control for sure. So we definitely have a structure type interaction style, uh, you know, communication style set up for ESTP or ENFJ for sure. Um, stating what is statements. He's pretty concrete. Hasn't really talked about systems at all this entire time. And I mean, come on, it's Johnny Cash. You kind of already basically know he's pragmatic. He's not really talking about like the affiliative. So anyway, by process elimination, Johnny Cash is an ESTP because that's apparently who we like to type tonight is ESTPs. Uh, ah, Mr. Sands Johnson, if you're so biased, you know, and like, well, I mean, come on, like statistically speaking, it may be like improbable, but uh, it can happen. You know, people type in bursts, you know, so what can I say? Johnny Cash, ESTP. Moving on to the next one, uh, for sure. Moving on to the next one, bringing it out. So we got, uh, let's see here, it is Johnny Cash, going to delete that one. And uh, Johnny Cash, so next uh, we got Larry David, but we got Sasha Baron Cohen with Basic Betty. So that means Basic Betty is next with uh, Sasha Baron Cohen. And we'll do the CBS uh, uh, version for that as well. So let's uh, let's get that going. Sasha Baron, if I can actually spell properly. We'll do the CBS uh, interview for Sasha Baron Cohen. Can't spell to save my life. Uh, add a Sasha Baron Cohen, okay, CBS. Sasha Baron Cohen is a one-man cinematic machine whose movies have grossed over 800 million... Any German speaking country, apart from Germany. A new life in America, it opened this week, and we're pleased to have Sasha Baron Cohen in Studio 57. Welcome. <laughs> Hello, how are you? Uh, $800 million. Is the secret to this, uh, with these characters, you can do the most outrageous things and take the most outrageous risk? Well, yes, there's a freedom in playing these, uh, you know, extreme characters. But, you, you know, you're not just being outrageous for the sake of it. I mean, in Borat and Bruno in the Ali G show, occasionally, you know, obviously the first aim is to be as funny as you can, but, you know, occasionally you, you know, we end up uncovering some unpleasant truths and people end up <laughs> over, really opening yeah, exactly. up. Exactly. Yes. Behind all the madness there is yeah. truth. Yes, you're... Gonna have to mark this guy down as pragmatic for basically everything he just said. All about, you know, talking about the creative freedom, going outside of the box. He's not really focused on doing the right thing. Let's be straight. Your friends say, the friends who know you well say that you, you've always, as a time you were a little kid, had no chutzpah, had you, that you had chutzpah and no fear. And that sort of drives you today. Do you think that that's true? Is that how you operate? Uh, I don't think I've got no fit. No, I think, uh, you know, I do, listen, you know, there's been things that I've done in Borat and Bruno where, you know, you're going into a scene and you know that there's a chance you'll get injured. You know, yeah. for example, in the cage fight in Bruno, where there's 1,200 very angry people in there, and I'm about to sort of make out with a guy and there's going to be a riot, and I know there's going to be a riot. <laughs> It's not that I'm not scared. I am scared, but I'm able to overcome the fear. Uh -huh. so the, that's what I'm good at. <laughs> where do the characters come from, like the most recent, The Dictator? Well, the, the inspiration of The Dictator was really Colonel Gaddafi. Uh -huh. who, you know, he was... He's Aladdin, yeah. What, he's obviously... You know, I mean, it's a mixture of various different characters, and it was based on an old character I had. But Colonel Gaddafi was kind of... Very direct. Uh, definitely someone who's direct. Uh, direct and pragmatic. Um, he's choosing his role in the conversation with the interviewers. Um, 
Not really sure with it, with initiating and responding. He's got a really good capability to cognitive transition between his ego and uh, I would say his subconscious. So let's let's keep going. The most absurd of the dictators, you know, obviously vicious, but you know, would dress unintentionally like a 65 year old woman, uh, often yeah, broke right, right. wind during interviews yeah. with the BBC, yeah. had 15 virgin guards who protected them at all times, very few of whom you remained as virgins. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, for as research, I met up with uh, Mohammed Al-Fayed, the father of right. Dodi Al-Fayed right. mm -hmm. and the ex-owner of Harrods, who knew uh, Gaddafi. And uh, I said, what, did you ever have any interaction with him? He said, yes. You know, before the days of Viagra, he said, I used to, to supply him with genital suppositories so that he could extend his sexual performance. So apparently Gaddafi... That was very pragmatic. It was also very S.E. and I talking about someone else's experience. Wow. Gaddafi would send someone to Al Fayed every three months for these kind of special suppositories, you know, in the pre Viagra days. So then he could do what again? No. Well, no, but the thing is, these dictators, the one yeah. thing that links them together, you know, is their, they have many women. You know, yes. what does the most powerful man in the world do? He gets no, 30 we, women, you know, the bunga bunga uh, parties. Exactly. Yes. You do understand you ever, what I'm talking about? No, I was no, talking no about. We, we, we definitely get the joke. Do you ever wonder or, or ever worry about offending someone, or do you just think, look, people, it's a joke. Just stay with me, please. Do you, is, does that ever cross your mind? Not really. I mean, you know, the idea is that, you know, Not comedy really. should be free, you know. And, you know, the to idea single out a particular be free. group and say, we can't make a joke about them is almost a form of prejudice, you know. And it's, it's kind of patronizing. This is the first time I've seen you not in character. And my, me too. <laughs> <laughs> because... It's kind of form of patronizing. Uh, that's a very uh, TE statement, actually. Uh, using that label, uh, talking about like basically how he feels. He maintains that's like a uh, a uh, a moral principle of his that's been violated as a result, which would put him down as SFP and TJ Quadra. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, direct and pragmatic, uh, SFP, NTJ, Quadra, which means he'd have to be an NTJ by default, an ENTJ or an INTJ. So let's keep going. Other than the fact that we asked because we wanted to see you... Not well, care. it's a different kind of movie. I mean, this movie, I'm not undercover. It's not with real people. It's not yeah. a documentary. It's a, it's a story. It's a kind of, you know, if you imagine Colonel Gaddafi... Uh, out, you know, out of power and working in a vegan health food store in Brooklyn. Yes. <laughs> that's that's the kind of thing. So, so in order to convey that, I mean, that was very abstract. If you can imagine uh, Colonel Gaddafi working in a uh, you know Brooklyn store, is that etc. That was very abstract. So fair enough. That meets our NTJ approach. So is he control versus movement? Leaning towards movement at this point. Uh, but let's keep going. Your mother and dad wanted you to go to Cambridge and wanted you to go to law school. Yes. They must be proud. Now, are they surprised by anything that's come out of your movie career? Uh, well, I did go to Cambridge. I ended up not going to law school. You know, bear in mind. I did end up going to Cambridge. I, I did not end up going to law school. Find, you know, when I grew up in London, you know, in a suburb of London, there were no sort of people who went to Hollywood and started making movies. So, you know, when I went to London, there were no people who went to Hollywood and started making movies. Kind of, that's more evidence of FITE, uh, talking about credibility and, uh, you know, and, and fame in that regard. When I told very my good. parents I wanted to become an actor, they... But it's very pessimistic. It's not, it's not optimistic. Assumed it was a life of poverty. Same yeah. thing with me. Yeah. And I didn't know anybody in television. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So it seemed absurd and, you know... But you gave yourself five years, you said, to make it. Why five years? Well, how did you come up with five? Well, I said five said years in order to make enough money to kind of feed yeah. myself, you know, uh -huh. and that was it. And uh, at the end of five years, actually, I landed the job as, you know, playing this reporter, which I had made up. Five years is how long it would take for me to, you know, make enough money to feed myself. It's kind of funny, you know, especially when you look at NTJs, but more particularly INTJs, and they have their very pragmatic system approach uh, to, you know, like, Oh, I'm only going to eat this many, this many calories, etc. You know what I'm saying? Like, besides, if he really is TIFE, like, would this guy, like, he hasn't talked about people or caring for people at all this entire time. He has not. He's only been talking about his fame this entire time, which is indicative of, F of TEFI. 
And I'm going to say he's definitely systematic because, you know, he had his little five-year system and that's what he maintains the best thing for sure. So yeah, this guy is definitely an NTJ. It's just which NTJ is he, right? So uh, leaning towards movement on this one, but uh, let's keep going. The character of Ali G. Yeah. Yes. What's interesting to Ali me Q. as well is that what you do in character is not unlike some of the things you would do in which you would take on character to get admitted to things, even at Cambridge, into backstage and into theater so yes. you could do things. Yes, well, listen. You pose as a waiter or, or as part of the, the crew. Yes, well, listen. Oh, I'd like to add, folks, uh, no more uh, Super Chats. Super Chats are closed. And don't forget, folks, if the show ends and there's Super Chats left over, that's it, right? So no more Super Chats. You can, however, Super Chat more to add to your current Super Chats that you have. But Super Chats, new Super Chats, they are closed at this point. They, we are closed on the Super Chats. Thank you. Because I'll be here for like three hours and I'm not doing that tonight. At Cambridge, you know, the thing about it is you, because I didn't work very hard, I was mainly acting. <laughs> yeah. one, I got you, Peter. No worries. One of the things I had to realize was how to fake it and how to <laughs> black my way through university. Yes. So, you know, there was a training there. I was surprised but, to see also you've had some great... How to fake it, how to do it. I got to say he's responding. He hasn't really initiated any points that much. I'm not really seeing it at all. He's staying within the context of what uh, is being asked, and he's constantly talking about, you know, his process. It's like, hey, I had my five-year plan to get me to where I needed to feed myself, but he wasn't talking about specific goals or specific outcomes within his career that he would need to reach, et cetera, right? So I honestly, I, I have to maintain he's direct responding movement. So which would make Sasha Baron Cohen uh, an INTJ, folks. He is an INTJ. So anyway, let's move on to the next person um, on the uh, list here. So, okay. And if someone put one down for Seth MacFarlane, we did Seth MacFarlane last week and uh, if that's the case, I'm going to need you to change your super chat, please, to someone else. Um, definitely. Okay, so uh, we just did uh, Sasha Bear Cohen. We're going to delete that, Basic Betty. And then we're going to delete and the other uh, uh, Basic Betty as well. Um, so change Billy McFarland, Rudy Giuliani. Okay, that's cool. So we got a tie for Prince Harry and for uh, Rudy Giuliani at uh, $25 here. But because Brandy got hers in first, we're going to be doing Prince Harry. So let's get uh, Prince Harry. He's probably like some ISFJ. Let's be straight, you know. So let's do some, uh, some Prince Harry. Um, it's going to be hard with all the uh, scripting that those uh, folks do. So let's see. Prince Harry interview. Um, let's do 2016. Uh, on Invictus Games, uh, Princess Diana, Michelle Bonnie, um, uh, okay. Competition at the Invictus Games got underway this morning in Florida after last night's opening ceremony in Orleans for him, the competitors, and what it might have meant to his comfort zone. How do you describe that? Um, no, you know what, I've said to a lot of people in the past that um, I am probably, I view myself as Captain Wales first and then Prince Harry second. As I've said to a lot of people in the past, you know, I am uh, Captain uh, Wales first and then Prince Harry second, which is very uh, S-I-N-E statement, uh, if I've ever heard one. You know, I've, I've, done, I've done all this stuff. I've, I've walked the walk, I've worn the t-shirt, I've done a lot of what these guys uh, have done and I've been lucky enough not to be injured. So it seemed very fitting for me to be able to use my name and, and status mm -hmm. to bring a spotlight onto, on, onto these individuals, create the platform and allow... Oh, I'm using my name and status uh, to create a spotlight for these individuals and create this platform because I am affiliative AF. All about being affiliative because I'm just doing the right thing. You know what I'm saying? Because I am also an SI user and I am doing my duty while also being, you know, affiliative and uh, and concrete AF because I'm an obvious SJ. LOL. Allow them to flourish. That platform is the Invictus Games, a competition of wounded airman Brett Parks Go. and Air Brett broke up an armed while paddleboarding. I lost about 
private. You know, they're the ones who see you in pain. And First trip to the United States when you were nine. Yes, exactly. Uh, Do you remember? Nine, nine, 1993, whatever yeah. the math is about. Yeah. I brought, I wow, 1993. That's a that's a really good SI remembering, like going that far back in his past. Uh, that's pretty cool. Very factual, very TIFE, if I would uh, say so myself. And he's also talking about other people and how they feel. I brought they the value. picture of you, of course. Uh, <laughs> okay, all those years ago. Yeah. I tell you what, if you sit in the front, you don't get as wet by the looks of things. In that yes, picture. yeah. And you were with your mother. Yeah, with our mother. And you know, we had happy, happy memories. You know, it's, it was it was absolutely fantastic. And it's so nice to be back here, back here with with all with all these. Guys. Very informative. Very very informative. Um, Definitely informative, uh, affiliative, uh, very what is uh, so far with what we can grab. It's gonna, I honestly, you know, obviously, it's it's obvious to me we're dealing with SFJ NTP Quadra here uh, with him, but uh, let's see, are we dealing with uh, ESFJ ENTP or um, with uh, or ISFJ in this case? So I don't know. Um, I'm definitely leaning towards ESFJ, ISFJ, but which is it? Is he informed in any movement or is he informed responding control? Kind of seems more movement oriented, but, but uh, let's uh, let's see. As uh, I like open that thing that should not be opened. Okay. Guys as well. What do you think your mother, Princess Diana, would think about what you've done here for veterans? Um, I, I'd hope she'd be, you know, incredibly proud. I hope she'd be sitting up there having her own little party, um, and looking down, thinking, you know, what, what, what we've achieved because it's a massive, massive team effort. What we've achieved. Oh, what we have achieved because it's a massive team effort because, you know, I'm affiliative AF and still very concrete. It was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I, I would love it if she was here and I'm, I'm sure she would uh, be running around causing chaos like I intend to. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she'd enjoy uh, me running around causing chaos as I intend to. Okay, yeah, so it's a form of movement. Let's keep going. We're going to do look at a different interview. Let's see what else we can do. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Yesterday, when we talked with Prince Harry about the Invictus Games, which will be held. Share that uniform. We share the training. We share, in some cases, Afghanistan. First time for who? It is. It's. It's. It's, it's very special. I suppose it was never to be going to have to get to the stage where I was always going to be Prince Harry, and despite the fact that I always wanted to be Captain Wales, treated the same in the same uniform as everybody else. I think there was that, that acceptance, the, the power that the name has. Like their mother, Prince Harry and Prince William have used that power to draw attention to their charitable work. I hope that a lot of my um, mother's talents are shown in a lot of the, the work that I do. Weirdly, actually, she um, wouldn't be my first time to Florida, to Disney World. I ended up going there with, with her. It's one of my very, very, very happy memories. I went on Space Mountain 14 times. <laughs> I was like, this is absolutely fantastic, it's the best thing ever. Um, so, you know, there's, there's all, all sorts of places over the world where we were very lucky to have those moments with our mother and very, very happy memories. This room, mm -hmm. this is... Yeah, happy memories and I'm still concrete and like, I need a better interview than this because this is not like making it easy. I'm tired of all this scripted crap. Like, when can we get to like a real, interview you know what I'm saying let's try this one maybe this is better Prince Harry thank you so much for joining us to talk about the Invictus Games here in Orlando so why for the US to host the games why Orlando why Orlando well uh, it was a choice between Orlando or Washington and Orlando came up came up top I think the the easiest way to answer that is because of Disney World and my love and passion for coming back to Disney World, but uh, deep down inside, I think the, um, this, the, the importance around the families bit is, uh, is, is a real thing for us. And to give the competitors a chance to bring their families and their children over from all the other 14 different nations to, uh, to Disney World, to enjoy the delights of, of Disney and everything it has to offer. And also, the weather is absolutely fantastic. And, and also, the weather is absolutely fantastic. As I initiate an additional point mid-sentence, 
and like I, Orlando is obviously a good choice because of my fond childhood memories that I had with my mother while I was also uh, in Disney World and I want to give everyone the opportunity because I have extroverted intuition child to an Effie hero to give everybody what they want and to make everyone feel good because I am an ESFJ. So there you go. ESFJ folks for Prince Harry, ESFJ. Let's watch just a little bit more though. You know what? America was where. You know what? America is I'm as I am, as I'm initiating, and I'm literally a George W. Bush clone. Was born. It was where I stole it from. So it seemed, it seemed right and appropriate to bring it back to you guys. And you mentioned that. So talk a little bit about where this idea came from, because it did come from an event you saw here in the United States. Yes, I think it was in uh, 2012, I probably got that wrong, but it was sometime then uh, that I came over to Colorado Springs to watch the Warrior Games, which I hope most of you guys have heard about, if not seen, hopefully. And during a trip there, I realized that I, I saw sport take a, an, a hugely important part in the rehabilitation and the recovery process of all these individuals. And um, for those who don't know, the Warrior Games is a, is a multi-sport uh, multi uh, discipline I don't need to watch more. This guy is an ESFJ. I think I think I've driven that point home at this point. So, gotta love uh, as the audience has pointed out. Uh, uh, let's get the shmoney shmoney bro. Those SJs and their monarchies. Yes, L O L. Yes, definitely all about it, bro. So yeah, let's uh, move on to the next one, which I believe is Peter Wiggett's choice of. Billy somebody, let's see. Billy McFarland. Oh, no, it is Rudy um uh, Rudy uh Giuliani. So let's get down to that as well as I remove uh the Prince Harry one here. So Rudy Giuliani, awesome. We could do Rudy Giuliani. I'm down. So all right, Rudy uh Giuliani interview. Let's see, 2007. Let's see. Chris Cuomo clashes with Rudy Giuliani over at Cretane. Uh, full interview. Uh, wild Week of Television interviews. Full interview. Okay. Three years ago. Uh, all right. Joining me now to talk about this all is former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani, a supporter of Donald Trump. Mr. Mayor, thanks for joining us. Hi, Jake. How are you? Good. Thank you so much. Donald Trump making an effort yesterday to reach out to African Americans. It seems to have been welcomed by those inside the church. But I have to say, in interviews, many African Americans say they are still troubled by Mr. Trump having suggested over and over, falsely, eligible to be president. Well, you know, the interesting thing is the first one that made that claim was Hillary Clinton. Well, not, she... her, not her herself, people well, around her, can... her. The first person that made that claim was Hillary Clinton. You know, when you get, you get someone who's like, hey, you know, let's 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 look at the uh, the person who's making the claim here and start questioning the credibility. That basically means I'm automatically, guys, I am a TE user. I'm a TE user, guys, because that's what I'm all about, Giuliani. Cool. Rudy Giuliani, let's get this uh, going. Her campaign did. They were the first ones that brought it up. And finally, it was resolved uh, after Donald Trump uh, raised it. So. Uh, they, they maybe have a faulty memory there as to where that issue first came from and what first suggested it to well, you them. Say it, it you say it was the Clinton was, campaign. That's fair enough, sir, to say that people around the Clinton campaign uh, brought that up. But as you say, it was resolved in 2011 when he released his birth certificate. Donald Trump talking about this as recently as February of last year at CPAC saying that he thinks the birth certificate is false. Should he just apologize for this to... to let if he really wants to on television shows is apologizing maybe a lot of the democrats should apologize for calling donald trump a racist and uh calling him all, all kinds of terrible maybe all these other people should be doing these things okay sceni fair enough names and uh, it gets a little silly let's get, let's get down to the basic issue here uh, for years, uh, people say Republicans don't reach out to the African-American community. Well, he reached out to the African-American community. Maybe it isn't the... He did this. He did that. S-E-N-I, S-E-N-I. Although, let's be honest, that's not really that great because, I mean, if you're looking at uh, interviews, etc. 
it's the context of a political discussion. I want to get something a little bit more, a little bit more uh, low key. Maybe if he's gonna like have a conversation that is not. Uh, let's see here. Jan rather reports on Giuliani's leadership in the aftermath of the September 11th attacks. Okay. Uh, Rudy, on whether he testify uh, before Congress. No, no, no. Come on, like, does he, like, ever have a meeting or a, uh, oh, there we go. Trump's lawyer, Rudy Jones, willing to testify in impeachment inquiry. Okay, let's try that. I was asked to do this by the State Department. I didn't know Mr. Yermak from a hole in the wall. The name of Yermak was given to me by Kurt Vogel, ambassador. I was asked to meet with him. I did meet with him. I briefed them, two of them, on everything I did. And I have a very nice text at the end explaining how honest and straightforward I was, which is which I am. I have a very nice text at the end saying how honest and straightforward I was because that text, that external thinking, gives me credibility because it's like I can wear that like a badge of honor because I'm so achievement-based because I'm an obvious TE user. Oh, yeah. And while I'm explaining everything, I'm going to do it as fast as possible because I'm obviously movement. So I'm S-E-N-I-T-I-T-E-F-I, -I -E -I, you know, so... Okay, fair enough. You know, and oh, by the way, these people did this for me, you know, like, okay, great. You don't have any issue with a foreign power investigating a political rival of the president? I do if he didn't do anything, but if he bribed the president of that country, I have an issue if they don't investigate. So the ends justify the means? No. That's, that's <laughs> no. <laughs> As he's making a very pragmatic argument, okay. <laughs> Opposite way around. It would be totally illegitimate not to investigate it. If a president, if a vice president of the United States goes somewhere and extorts the president of that country or bribes the president of that country to get his son out of trouble, I'd find it extraordinary if they didn't investigate it. The Ukrainians. I find that extraordinary if they didn't investigate it. That's very TEFI. Okay. And uh, very, uh, very direct. Okay. Fair enough. Today, say that when they investigated this prosecutor, Joe Biden's son wasn't even working for the gas company. What, are they lying? In yes. Your view? Yeah, he, he was. He began working for. You just read the New York Times. He began working for this company in 2015. He didn't stop working for the company until two months ago, and the um, the investigation was tanked, meaning dropped in 2016. So that's completely untrue. And I mean, do you totally... have a right as a non-government employee to investigate them, to freelance ultimately? I wasn't freelancing. Why do, why do you say things like that? I mean, that, that, that... Why do you say I'm free, freelancing, T-E-F-I-S-E-N-I? -E why are you saying that? Because, like, I'm slippery AF, you know. And now also he had to explain the system as well because he's pragmatic and systematic. So definitely an NT, direct movement. I could say INTJ right off the bat, but... I'm gonna watch a little bit more from a different For every single person touched by this unthinkable, what do we tell the children? I think we hug them a lot. I think we let them know that we're there for them. You gotta talk about it. Whether you talk about it with friends, whether you talk about it with your children. The... We got to talk about that because, you know, I'm an SENI and we need to have our voices heard because I'm TEFI as well. You gotta get it out. You gotta talk about it. And children need that. And some of them need it professionally. I'm interested to know how you're doing. I'm doing, I'm doing okay. You know, uh, I, at some point, I'm going to have to just go off by myself and reflect on all the people that I... At some point, I'm just going to have to go off by myself and reflect on all the people very responding. Okay. I've known that I've lost. And, uh, there's a whole personal part to what happened at the World Trade Center that I just haven't had the time to think about too much because I need to focus on the things I need to do to keep a city together and moving the city together, but every once in a while at the funerals and I realize how many friends I lost. Yeah, because I'm probably like drunk as hell in this interview, trying to get through this interview because this is a terrible situation. Or a missing. And Have you had time to grieve? Only, uh, only intermittently. I had to go to a funeral service and then I, on the after the funeral service, I went into a bathroom by myself, just locked the door and just cried. I just cried for about. Very responding as well. Very direct, very movement. So yeah, Rudy Giuliani, folks, he is an INTJ. So awesome. 
We're going to move on from that one as well. And I wonder who is next in the list. This one, uh, delete. Guys, super chats are closed. Stop sending more. Uh, okay, so Peter, uh, let's see, Peter Wiggett. Let's get that one as well. Delete that one. Awesome. All right, so next one on the list is um, Anna Nalik. Anna Nalik is next. Awesome. Um, guys, just so you guys know, like, show ends in 25 minutes, so, you know, what I get to is what I get to, right? If you're, super, if you're missing your super chat, well, you know, if you have put in multiple ones, I'm looking at you, uh, Jennifer Stone, uh, if you probably want to combine all of your super chats together and pick one of the ones that you had, uh, that might be useful to get you ahead some of the other people because you put in so many. And otherwise, folks, you can also add in additional super chats to the ones that you just currently did to get your numbers up there if you want. But there's a good chance I'm not going to be able to get to all of them tonight because of the flood. It's, there's so many. So just be advised on that. So, okay. Uh, let's see here. Um Adam Sandler or Shane Dawson or uh, Anna Nalik. So do an Anna Nalik next. Let's do that. Uh, my name is Anna Nalik and I'm a singer and a songwriter songwriter first and um, I have a song called Breathe which um, has been played on the radio and, and on television and I'm very excited about it. It's the first song that I've ever heard of mine um, anywhere besides in my head. It's really funny yes being in Vegas it, it plays all over. Okay I want like a real person interacting with her. But uh, yeah, it's actually, like the reverse here. I've never been to the Magic Castle either, but I've heard that it's really fun. You need to like know a magician to get you in. I know, it's actually, like I think I know a few people, but I, I've never, I've never gone. Never ventured. Mm -hmm. I'd everyone, like to. Everyone says that I gotta go there, and I've, I haven't been west of Ohio. I'm like the most sheltered northeasterner really? you've ever met. Yeah. No, I was like that too. Until I, just, until I started touring, uh -huh. I had only been um, to California, Nevada, and New York, and maybe Connecticut too, and then nowhere else. <laughs> now I've been everywhere. And so how has the touring been for you? How is the life on the road? Really fun, actually. Um, we've been with some great artists, and we've we've met some really cool people. I've uh, I've been to places I never thought I'd get to go, and uh, we just got back from Japan. Uh, I had three days to to make my video for um, my second single called In the Rough, uh -huh. and then. Um, a few days later, I was on the bus again. So uh, this this tour we're doing, um, I'm this is my first headlining tour. Right. Blue Merle is opening for me, and oh yeah, we got Larry David as well. David Dare, Larry David is coming next. Uh, so. And uh, I've never seen them play, but I met them today, and they're really nice guys. Tonight's our first show together, and then um, when we're done. Together, I opened for Rob Thomas for a month, and uh, that's cool. Uh, that'll be fun. Yeah, too. I heard you guys hung out with him last night. That he kind of, kind of movement. I'm thinking informative, initiating movement here. Uh, with uh, with where she at. she's very informed. She's very movement. Uh, she initiated a few points, uh, but let's keep going. Not really seeing uh, so much of the TEFI fame self-aggrandizement. I'm gonna say a TIFE, uh, but we can verify that. Yeah, I met Albany. him a few times. He's really a sweet guy, but last... Yeah, I met him a few times, and I'm going to interrupt you because I'm initiating. It's not I had a chance to sort of spend time with him and his wife and their dog who got dog hair all over the skirt that I'm going to wear tonight. 
who got dog hair all over the skirt that I'm going to wear tonight, which is S I N E, talking about her own personal experience. <laughs> and, uh, and which is, you know, fine. It's little puppy love uh, from the dog. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I think it'll be a lot of fun there. He's a very talented guy, very nice. And no, he's a very talented guy. He's very nice. I'm very T I F E in the process, you know. T I F E. He seems really down to earth. A lot of, uh, oh, a yeah. couple of my friends worked in. Oh, yeah, because, like, I'm initiating while also informative, while also movement, T-I-F-E-S-E-S-I-N-E, -E, because, you know, I'm either an ESFJ or I'm an ENTP, you know, one of the two, just so you know, one of those. In restaurants, um, I used to live in Westchester, New York, and he lives there, and so they, they've seen him around. It's always so. good to, you know, get along well with the bands that you're on the road with. We've had some really great situations. We've had, we've had some not so good situations, uh -huh. and it makes all the difference to like the person that you're on the road with. How was Howie Day? Just out of curiosity, was he good? Bad? He's a really talented guy. I have mm -hmm. to say, I hadn't listened to um, all of his albums, mm -hmm. and then uh, to hear him perform live and get a chance to hear some of the older stuff that I didn't know. He's got some. You know, I haven't listened to all his album, albums, and I couldn't hear all the other things that I didn't know. She continues to say I, 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 S, I, N, E, S, I, N, E, over and over and over again. Uh, definitely not hearing her talk about, you know, other people and doing the right thing, leaning more towards pragmatic. Uh, don't really see much about abstract, abstract versus concrete. It's kind of going back and forth. She's just answering his questions, etc. cetera. Uh, very systematic or interest. Not really sure yet, so we'll, let's keep going. Uh, she'd have to be systematic. Really, really beautiful songs. So we had him like four years. I remembered being in grade school or, you know, junior high, and, uh -huh. and my friends loved that song, and I would tell them, someday I'm going to write songs like that, <laughs> and someday I want to be a songwriter, and, and I'd kind of think in the back of my mind, yeah, that's never going to happen, and now I'm touring with him. It's, it's really <laughs> insane. Kind of surreal. Oh, very, very surreal. But, you know. That was very movement, uh, talking about, hey, you know, we don't really know what the outcome is, but I'm just going to see what happens because I'm movement AF, you know, in that process. So let's uh, let's keep going. There's also, you know, I went to Japan and went to a karaoke bar and karaokeed my own song. That's surreal. That's definitely not something I ever expected to do. The most, what was the reaction? People, people don't recognize my face yet. Uh -huh. or I mean, they might never, but... <laughs> they, people don't recognize my face. They don't always recognize my name, but they always recognize my song. Right. Um, and for the for what I've experienced, I mean, I'm sure there's people out there who don't know it, but but um, you know, if, if I say somebody will look at my band mainly and be like, oh, what band are you guys in? Because they look like total rock stars. I'm just the little <laughs> silly girl that follows them around, and um, and they'll say, oh, with Anna and Alec, and they'll point to me. And I'll say, yeah, that's me. Oh, really? What kind of music? And I'll say, well, I have a song on the radio, and it's called Breathe. It goes, breathe, just breathe. And they, oh, I love that song. I love that song. <laughs> and they're like, I didn't know that was you. So I think if I did go to a karaoke bar and karaoke my own song, um, I don't think anybody would realize that it's actually me. But I think that they would be like, wow, that girl pretty, sounds... Yeah, that's very pragmatic, actually, uh, going to karaoke bar, playing your own song for that. It's not like necessarily how anyone would define like doing doing the right thing per se it's not as regal like our esfj you know prince harry that we had earlier etc just not really seeing that from her at all and uh uh you know it's not like it's uh, the best Dead on. Like the radio. <laughs> she's good she should go she's... in that's a really interesting thing though that's i was walking through my hotel and and the song was playing and and i it's as exciting every single time i hear it Tiger Woods has put together a foundation to help kids, a learning center, uh, a place for them to go to really ex explore all of the possibilities in their lives and, and explore all of the possibilities in their lives because I'm abstract. How far they can go. I'm I'm the entertainment tonight. I'm opening for Sting, which is very exciting. Of course, as an artist, I'm a fan of his and and. Um, and I got to meet both Sting and Tiger Woods, and they're very sweet people, and I think tonight... ENTPs, we like wearing black because, you know, I mean, let's be straight. ENTP, the ENTP archetype, same archetype as Lucifer, you know, the angel of light. And because, you know, we have the light of the TI fire, uh, TI parent truth, you know, we're kind of burned by all that overwhelming light. And, you know, our clothes are just burned in the pure blackness, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> just kidding, but I mean... 
cool metaphysical concept, right? So anyway, uh, she's an ENTP. I'm not going to. Uh, she's definitely an ENTP. So there you go, folks. Anne and Alec is a uh, ENTP, so, uh, which is cool. Uh, ISFJ focused, uh, definitely, uh, with uh, her approach. Um, but yeah, so ISFJ focused ENTP. Cool. Uh, let's do uh, good old uh, Larry David next. This is going to be fun because he's quite old, and this is probably going to be a super mega hard one. But let's do it. Let's do Larry David. You know, he's always in character all the time. So maybe Larry David uh, interview. Um, rare interview. The hottest ticket on Broadway right now is a comedy called Fish in the Dark, written by and starring Larry David. He's famous for playing a crusty curmudgeon. Or, I mean, we who the hell knows? I don't know. Well, you do know. Well, wait, wait, whatever you're seeing, that's no. who I am. What? Really? No, yeah. well, it's not true. You told me you created a character. It's not you. It's who you might want to be, but are not. Who are you? I'm a jerk. That's who I am. I'm you're like not. Every, that's an act. I'm like everybody else. No, I'm a jerk. That's an yeah. act. No, it isn't. It really isn't. No. How are you a jerk? Oh, look, let's stop talking about me. I, that's why I didn't want to do this interview in the first place. I had to be talked into 60 Minutes. You think I wanted to do this? I didn't want to do it, because I knew I'd be, you'd be asking questions like this. Then why did you do it? They, uh, they talked me into it just like they talked me into the play. <laughs> oh, so you're a guy that you can be talked into things. Yes, hence the you jerk. You have no backbone. You have no capacity to say no. No. But the guy that you create would be able to say no. There you go. And there's your biggest hang-up. Yep. You can't say no, but you can create a character that can say no. Yeah. You're not a jerk, but you can create a character that's a jerk because you don't have the courage to be a jerk. That's perfect. That's good. That's good. I like that. How much you charge? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Larry David is pragmatic. I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> Super pragmatic. Gosh, there's a lot of people that would argue INTJ or um, or uh, uh, or INTP. Basically, I'm I'm leaning towards uh, leaning towards INTP. But let's see, let's let's keep going. <laughs> That's better than any therapy I ever got. Yeah. Whoever he is, Larry David attracts hardcore fans who will wait for hours in bone cracking cold for a stage door glimpse of their hero. Look at you, you're all prepared, huh? All right, bye! The play begins a three-month run this coming Thursday. Advanced ticket sales set a $15 million record with the best seats priced at $425 each. Jacket, my own shirt. He insisted on bringing his own clothes for comfort's sake. His own clothes for comfort's sake. Hmm, I... Introverted sensing. Hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, good luck trying to argue that, right? It takes me a while to acclimate to, to new clothing. I don't know about you. Mama, you're crazy? Fish in the Dark is a dark comedy about family dysfunction in typical Larry David style. After his father's death, Norman Drexel, David's character, fights with his mother, his brother, his wife, and the housekeeper, over just about everything. Well, it's not about me, but the character is, is. is very similar to me. Okay, it's me, yeah. That was a wonderful, wonderful eulogy. Sometimes his characters are so similar to the man, it's easy to get politically incorrect. A bit of a joke. Well, if that's not that, what is that? Well, wow, well, you guys are talking about Seinfeld, and all of a sudden, they're talking about Seinfeld. Hmm, expert intuition. David and Jerry Seinfeld created one of the most successful sitcoms ever. And by his own admission, the character closest to David's... Actually, a pr it's true. I remember it. Tip him. Is the acting, does it worry you? Did, did you have trepidation oh, about being able to do it? Is that one of the great understatements of the, of the century? Is that one of the great understatements of the century? As I... Okay, so that's T-I-F-E. Probably social anxiety. <laughs> yeah. What, forget your lines, not know how to move? All, all of it, all of it, yes, uh -huh. everything. Oh boy, all right on it, oh. It is a million miles from Broadway to Brooklyn and the apartment building where he grew up. He hadn't set foot in the place 
in half a century. This this was my apartment. This yeah. is where I grew up. Okay, in one hand, this is where my, this, my aunt, uncle, and cousins grew up. The current residents, the Galinskys, invited us in. Look at the size of our kitchen. This is the point in. So he literally lives in the exact same building that he grew up in. Uh, talk about SI uh, comfort zone, you know? Like, come on. <laughs> come on. And, and he's, he's really informative. Let's be straight. In most profiles where the subject is usually flooded with warm, yeah, nostalgic. Nothing. Yeah. Is, you, know, you moved on. <laughs> A place where yeah. your lovely and wonderful, yeah. loving mother raised you, yes. where she made you, yes. along with your father. Yeah, I feel you know, nothing. Gave yeah. you the confidence to go out. Yeah, I feel nothing. Okay, T-I-F-E. Okay, fair enough. S-F-J, N-T-P, Quadra, pragmatic, which means he has to be an E-N-T-P or an I-N-T-P by default, uh, one of the two. You know, so yeah, let's, uh, I think it's pretty obvious where this is going, folks. Well, wow, and oh, be what you became. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. Yes. Uh, my wife maintains that Dave Chappelle's an ESTP. Just saying. You feel yeah. that? No, no. It didn't touch you. No, I'm completely what devoid. What kind of heart do you have? I'm completely devoid of any feelings whatsoever <laughs> at this moment. I am completely devoid of feelings at this moment whatsoever. Yeah. Said every INTP ever. The David apartment was a lot like Seinfeld's. In anything you didn't I didn't even know things were going on by the way yes you I did I didn't even know I swear to you I didn't even know there was a prom okay you didn't go to the prom not, not I didn't even know there was a prom because extroverted sensing trickster my goodness okay my goodness all right yeah uh, so very informative um, and um, yeah very outcome focused talking about outcomes uh, specifically so yeah, he is an INTP, folks. Larry David is an INTP. So an INTP comedian. Well, there you guys have it. You know, if an INTP can make it, then uh, why are you, like if any of you INTJs are out there and an INTP can make it in comedy, what the hell are you doing? Use your ESFP subconscious for once and put us all out of our misery. You know what I'm saying? So awesome. Let's get, uh, let's get a little Larry David out of here as uh, Mr. INTP. And uh, let's see who's next. We just did Ananalic as well. We're gonna get rid of that one. Coming up on time here, folks. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, cool. And uh, so let's see who's next. And it's going to be, let's see, Shane Dawson is next. Shane Dawson, which people have been waiting for so okay fair enough i don't even know who shane dawson is is that wrong uh shane dawson uh interview shane dawson reacts to tom's wedding okay shane dawson uh larry king interviews shane dawson okay shane dawson interview uh okay uh shane dawson's winner interview okay Let's look at different situations. Hey, congratulations, what'd you win today? Uh, so today, uh, YouTuber of the year, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I don't come to these, I don't leave my house. I came to support my boyfriend who was nominated for something, and then I didn't think, I, was, I thought James Charles was gonna win this, so I, I didn't know what to say. And but, the, yeah. yeah. what? Very informative, initiating movement. Holy smokes, like, uh, wow, uh, okay. <laughs> Pretty obvious. <laughs> Shane Dawson. Okay. What happened with your boyfriend? He was nominated, and then what happened? Oh my god. Okay. No, we're fine. Wait, what do you mean? Oh. <laughs> I mean, so, like, wait. what were they nominated for? Like, uh, he won Vlogger of the Year. Yeah. 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 So and he then... wasn't oh, no. just nominated. He. Oh. And Dang. he's my fiance. God. Hey. Oh, yeah. 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 Congrats. Twice. It's yeah. okay. My fiance won an award tonight. Oh, and Andrew, we make all the videos together. Oh, well, yes. I appreciate you bringing me up there, man. Not necessary, <laughs> but I appreciate it. So just really quickly, I know that you've been video uh, vlogging. Excuse me for many, many years now. Since the origin of YouTube, a co-founder of sorts, I'm sure. Um, that's not true. Um, it's not. Yeah, it's not it's really you should not get true. stuck in YouTube at this point. I mean. Is there a is there a video that sticks out to you specifically over the years? Oh, um, 
Yeah, I mean, I think this year we've been doing a lot of documentaries. When we met, we started working on uh, more series type of things and, you know, uh, uploading two hour videos, which I never thought anybody would ever want to watch. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, just. It's funny. People watch my two hour videos all the time. Just making stuff like that, doing the Mind of Jake Paul, I think was. Oh, yeah. Right? That Tanacon. Was quite the, that was quite the year. Well, how long did it take? <laughs> Yeah, the, it like every one of these things that we do kind of takes a chunk away from my mm -hmm. soul and my life. Sure. But so that's what this is. They're such well-developed videos too. They're long, wonderful videos. Yeah. Um, full of. Do you? Zach Sang and the gang hanging out right now in the studio. Shane Dawson, new book out right now. I hate myself. My selfie. Love it. <laughs> I love you, by the way. Yeah. It's a pun, and I really do hate myself. <laughs> Why? You're so Yay. successful. Thank you. You're killing life as all. I really do hate myself. Wow, you're so successful. Thank you. Effie deprecation. Always. Well, killing life, killing my selfie. Whatever. <laughs> uh, no, um, no, I'm like, well, you know what it is. Like, I hate my selfies. Like, I hate the version of myself online. You know what you want. Yeah, I, I totally get it. Because I find it really interesting, and I'm so glad that we get to talk uh, to, to you because. Here's the deal. I started uh, in digital radio like seven or eight years ago when digital radio wasn't a thing. Same thing time when you yep. started, when YouTube no. wasn't like, it, it wasn't a reality. It wasn't what it is today. No, it was a place where you go to watch like Kelly Clarkson's American Idol winning performance, which was amazing. Yeah. And like cats, <laughs> and cats and fat people falling down. That's it. That was really it. And you were one of the first content creators on YouTube. That's an honor, man. Like if you, do you sit back and, and See not only where you started, but also where YouTube started and where it is today. I know it's really. I used to get really annoyed at P Diddy when he'd say things like, "I started this," and I'd be like, "No, you didn't." But he did, and that's how I feel. I'm like, I started this. Every time I see like a kid in a wig doing a terrible video, I'm like, I started this. I did it first. That that there's an honor there. I mean, come on, like you, th <laughs> that's. I started this. I started this. Sounds like uh, S I N E if I've ever heard it. That, there's a culture and a society that's like solely around YouTube and YouTube stars. I mean, there there is studies that show that you know people like Johnny Depp and Jennifer Lawrence, kids don't even like them as much as they love YouTube stars. It's depressing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, listen, I'm, it's awesome, but on the on the flip, flip side of that, you know, when I was starting, I wanted to be a director. I wanted to make movies. Like that mm -hmm. was my goal. Now you hear kids and they're like, I want to be a YouTuber yeah. when I grow up, and I'm like, what? No, yeah. why? It's we, terrible. Really? But it's well, great. I, is it? I feel like it, there is a. Hey, what's up, you guys? So I wanted to put something up that was a little bit different today. Um, recently, I was interviewed by Larry King, who is one of my fucking idols. I have been watching him since I was a little kid. Um, one of my effing idols because I am pragmatic. Nice. Um, I used to watch CNN every night with my mom, and I was like, one day, I went... I used to watch CNN every night with my mom, as I am continuing to be informative, initiating movement, and S-I-N-E at the same time. Grow up and be interviewed by Larry King, and I never thought it would happen, and it did. And it was one of the best days of my life. So, I thought it would be fun if I put up the interview here, so I could keep it here forever. So, enjoy the interview, it's like 15 minutes long, I talk about my life, I talk about a bunch of crazy shit, I make Larry laugh, and I probably make him uncomfortable. So, enjoy it, and I'll put the link down in the description for you to check out his other shows, because he has a bunch of them. They're not paying me to do this, I just love him so much. So, enjoy, I love you guys, bye! <laughs> Joining me now is Shane Dawson. In 2010, he was an actorial. So I've been making videos ever since I was six years old or something. Um, and uh, I was, you know, working a job at Jenny Craig, the weight loss company. I know Jen. Um, <laughs> you know Jen. So uh, very uh, T-I-F-E, facts, S-I-N-E, talking about his past consistently. He's SFJ, NTP Quadra for sure. Definitely, uh, definitely pragmatic uh, with what we've seen which means he'd have to be ENTP or INTP by default. And we know he's in form initiating movement. Ergo, Shane Dawson is an ENTP. So, awesome. Let's move on to the next one. We have ourselves an ENTP with Mr. Shane Dawson. So, which is pretty dope. I like ENTPs. Okay, so Shane Dawson, delete, delete. Okay, all right, so Lauren Teal, and then we have Adam Sandler. 
Uh, Hillary Duff, so many, so many, so many. Okay, let's do back. Let's see here. Uh, Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler interview, growing up in Brooklyn. Um, He's Adam Sandler, who's kind enough to join us, playing her today. Yes. And uh, you look great. You like it? Yeah, you look good. <laughs> Sam, so Sandman comes in, and I'm always interested to see. You like it? Very initiating. Uh, so, fair enough. As uh, Adam Sandler. Um, what he has on yeah. because chances are it wasn't picked out it was a perfect t-shirt before the accident yeah, so i perfect. said is that toothpaste on your yes. t-shirt and i thought i got it out yeah i you, you want to know how i tried to get it out sure. hot water and a and a rag that i saw that my my, my yes yeah, somewhere right yeah right there it's just a little off do you do household chores sometimes i pick up the dog's mess and uh and uh, i will Bring the, the dishes to the sink. All the way to the sink. So, uh, close to the sink. Have you done a load of laundry in the last five years? I would not know. How to do that. <laughs> but no, I, 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 I definitely, I like, I watch it when they turn it on. I watch it for the full 40 minute spin. It's fun. But you don't help out. No, I just, oh, but I'll encourage the people doing it. <laughs> way to go. Look at that. Nice work. But you grew up in New Hampshire, aren't you? Yes. Like a handyman? Can you do uh, electrical or carpentry? I can, I can uh, take an ice pick out and, and help clear the driveway and make You know what was always terrible uh, growing up when you saw your... You know what was always terrible? Initiating again. It's also informative. He's a movement. So informed initiating movement. Adam Sandler's a starter type, so which is pretty cool. And uh, seems S-I-N-E, as near as I can tell so far. Father Fall on the ice that was it that's when you were watching from the window is he yeah <laughs> it's like is daddy okay hey dad you all right yeah i used to scream help him somebody help him <laughs> and, was your dad funny uh, yeah but but a different kind he wasn't like a, a goofball like me he was just strong cool dude who uh when he talked everybody would listen and he would he would say very funny stuff and he would tell stories when did he acknowledge your humor he he always loved uh, like would get a kick out of me but uh he was always nervous for me he thought i was he'd be, he would say hey don't be such a big mouth you know, that kind of stuff he'd, he'd want me to calm down did you ever th want to be a serious actor no never even a thought and when the fact that i do stuff like that is great and, and i love doing it but it was not even well that was an s e n i statement as well so maybe an esfp hmm. Let's do a different interview. It's good to see you. It's, I'm sorry about everything. My beard, every I look... I, 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 I like it. What yeah. are you talking about? And I like the mustache in the movie, too. I think it's very dapper. That's funny. Aniston used to say I look better with it, but my wife thought it was disgusting. Really? Yeah, yeah. She didn't like the Did kisses. Did she like it now? Oh, the That was Essie talking about other people and their experiences with him as well. Kisses she doesn't like. The kisses like. aren't as good, my... Yeah, uh, it, it hurts her. Yeah. <laughs> no, let me feel how, how rough that it's is. Not, that's it's that's not, soft. It's, it is? I mean, yeah. I would think it's harder with razor burn, like not unless you're shaving every five minutes or something. That's yeah. got to be worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, thank you. Dapper. Oh, there he is. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's as good as I look. Yeah. That's the best. It's so funny that whenever in a movie they write in and Adam puts a tuxedo on, Baba, everyone's like, oh, where do you get the tuxedo? Every time I come out of the trailer with the tuxedo, you just see wardrobe going, ooh. I, I, I thought it would look better. What you... <laughs> but, but that looks all right on it me. It looks yeah. very good. Thank you. And you, it, you're like a, a Peter Sellers type uh, it, looking yeah. like that, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, the, uh, Jennifer looks very good. Uh, I, 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 we, we, do you want, should I talk about the movie? Yet? Not yet. No. Okay, we'll get no, to that. We'll get to that. Because I have other things to talk okay, to you about. Okay, thank you. Um, but, but the... Should I talk about the movie yet? That's a side question. Uh, interesting. Gosh, she's, uh, this one's pretty...
pretty hard. The movie's very funny, and it's beautiful. I mean, just w the locations that you pick oh, yeah. are just crazy. I want to be in all of your movies. <laughs> yes. um, so yeah. you're... you're uh, Keeps you, initiating. You have, uh, He's extroverted. Two daughters. Yes, and I have... How uh, old? The, the, the one's 10 and one's uh, 12, and the, the bat mitzvah is coming for the... Uh, for the older one, Sadie, and she's getting bat mitzvah in uh, like a month. Oh, so she's been practicing. That's exciting. Yes, yeah, nice. Yeah. She's doing great. What is that? What is that age of? Is that dating yet? That uh, 12 or 13? You know, I, I I drive around with her friends and I hear them talking about boys now. It's amazing the uh, feelings I had about the same boys, like five years ago when they would mention the kid's name, I'd be like, I love that kid. Now, I get very. <laughs> I'd be like that kid, and then now I'd get very this. He said a lot of I statements in that area. That's very introverted sensing. And he jumpy. They got little tiny mustaches, and they're <laughs> all a little tall, and their bodies aren't making much sense. And I see them, I see them make eye contact with my kid. It's very weird to see your kid lock eyes with a, a boy while they're talking. It's like, whoa, you lock with with daddy's eyes, man. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of creepy too. <laughs> 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 That's a good one, Alex. Really, You're right. Yeah, that, was, yeah. that is gross. Yeah. <laughs> Easy there. <laughs> You're not locked. So I you just say, yeah, I you know, I'm not yeah. saying gay. I understand. Daddy, so. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so you went to the Kids' Choice Awards, you yes. got slime. I did get slime. But you were warned, right? They warn you that you're going to get slime. They you know, I'm starting to think, like, you know, maybe he is direct responding movement, but cognitive transitioning, because it's like, it's like he's forcing himself to be an expert, when in reality, the situation, probably not, like, I don't know, kind of, kind of seems that way, um, or in foreign responding control, super hard one, this is fun, let's keep going, I'm gonna get more content with him to see, uh, how it's going because you know he kind of has like his own character about him you know at the same time like is that really the real him or something outside so this one's pretty complex let's dive in some more they asked me if i wanted to get slimed i said no because <laughs> i've done it before and it really it takes over your whole weekend once you get slimed you gotta clean it off for, it just doesn't come out easy it's all over inside parts of your body and, and you got to do crazy stuff so I told my 10 year old Sonny hey yeah uh, they asked if I wanted to get slimed I said no and then she goes you said no and I said no 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 I'll say yes and so I changed my mind real quick just to make her happy and uh, those two were in the crowd and then I got slimed at a oh yeah there I got hit hard in the face and I gotta tell you man I didn't know what was coming from I didn't <laughs> I didn't wow. know what was wow coming. yeah Right. So That's then I terrible. put my hood on. Too late. I thought it was going to drop from the sky. Like, that's what I, they usually got me in the past. So I was expecting to get hit. That's how they usually got me in the past. So I was expecting to get hit. Okay. That's an SI statement as well. In the head. And then they shot out of nowhere. They hit me hard in the, in the face. And I swear to God, I was blind. I was blind up there for like 10 minutes, you know? And I was like going uh, and... Uh, I'm having to say the rest of my award, and I'm holding the, uh, the the award up in the speech, and I can't see, and it's making no sense. And then they pull me off. They are here. This way, Adam. You know, they're at commercial. This way, this way. And I'm like, like that. And they bring me to take a shower. I take a shower. I try to get all the stuff, and, I, and I'm in the middle of the shower going, am I still supposed to be blind right now? I can't believe Because they hit, hit me deep in the eyeball. Wow. Well, that makes nobody want to ever get slimed listening to that story. That's... Yes, yes. No, it's fun. It's fun, except... Uh, uh, um, you were blind. The blind. For, for how... Making somebody else happy could be an F.E. statement, right? You know, and honestly, I'm going to stick with T.I. F.E. on this one. He's not made any achievement statements at all. He's just been stating facts this entire time. Definitely T.I. F.E. How long? How long did that last? I'd say halfway through driving home, I started seeing again. <laughs> that seems yeah. safe. That yeah, seems... it was fine. That's the kids great. will be fine with Hope that. you're happy, kids. <laughs> so you're hosting. It's a perfect to kick off our fifth anniversary week. Congratulations. Thank you, buddy. Oh, Can I... you believe all that? I can't That's believe it. It's unbelievable. It's so but nice. It's you, you and Big Bird. Big Bird is the... That's the best. Love Big Bird my entire life, like all of us. Love Big Bird. He always used to make me happy in the morning. Yeah. I like Bozo. Uh, Bozo the Clown was good. I, Bozo the Clown. I liked uh, one. The, uh, I I, I always, romp a room. I always wanted him to say my name. I see Adam. I know, yeah. No, I, never, I, never, never, I never got that, yeah. But Jimmy, uh, there was a, 
There's a show called Uncle Gus when I was a kid in Manchester, New Hampshire. So it was a kid show. Yes. So Uncle Gus was a show like all these other kid shows, and I got to, it was in my hometown, I got to be a guest. I was in the crowd. I got to be the guest. I was in the crowd. This guy is introverted sensing, introverted sensing, introverted sensing, and T-I-F-E, okay? Uncle Gus had this thing where he would hold a uh, scrambled letters up. He would put a thing up, five scrambled letters, and if any of the kids could spell the word, you win a stuffed animal. So I saw the five letters. I got very excited. I was like, oh, my God, I know it. I went up there, and I spelt canoe. And then Uncle Gus goes, that is a word, but that's not the word we're looking for. <laughs> and I went, but, that, but that's a word. And he goes, yeah, but not the one we're looking for. I go, yeah, but it's a word. <laughs> and, uh, and he goes, I know what it is. You keep saying that, but that's not the word <laughs> you're looking for. So Anyways, this boy comes up back. That's a word. That's a word. Very uh, D-I-F-E um, and uh, definitely pragmatic for sure. After that, he's kind of cocky, and he spells ocean. And he wins the stuffed animal. And uh, my mother on the way home said, I'll get you McDonald's. And, uh, oh, really? So you got cheeseburgers out of the thing? Two cheeseburgers and French fry anytime I wanted. But, That's not bad. I mean, you ever, you ever wonder what happened to that, that boy? Uh, unfortunately, I thought, you know, I went on to do great things, and he'd have to look at that and be disgusted, but... Uh, <laughs> He kind of also seems like an SI and he's just look at how he dresses. He dresses in the same way. It's all about dressing for comfort for him. He doesn't really care that much about aesthetics. Not really, you know, so uh, not really not really seeing expert at sensing as much. It's just especially looking at him between all these different interviews of how he's dressing himself. Right. It's just I'm just not really seeing it. I'm not really seeing it at all. It was Bono. It was Bono. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Anyways, it doesn't. Hee-haw! <laughs> 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 that was funny. Uh, pal, uh, congrats yeah. on this. I want to talk yeah. about this uh, Netflix special. Yeah. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Hey, Jennifer Anderson. So nice. She was so nice to my family and my two kids. Literally, she was so great with Sadie and Sunny. They were always in her room, hanging out uh, late at night. She'd work all day long, and then... And Sadie and Sonny were going, we're going to go see Jen. And I would, they'd go up there. And then I went up there one night, and, the, uh, and uh, I said, where's uh, the little one to Jen? She goes, oh, she's in the bathroom. And I go, and then I talked to the kids. I go, you can hang out with her. Don't, don't crap in her bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> she's Jennifer Aniston. Leave her oh alone. God. You got to really crap. You bring that back down to our room. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, come on. Uh, oh, it's called Murder Mystery, though, right? Murder Mystery, yes, coming out in the summertime. Jennifer's great in it. I'm in it, too. Uh, Thank you. This thing. Thank you. Uh, I did not know this was coming out. I did not know yeah. you were going to release this thing. I didn't know. Yeah, it's cool. They made an album from the Netflix special. It's cool. That's a nice. I, I, it's nice. Yeah. It's, it looks good. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. But even the. I am not seeing any. I'm not seeing any abstract. Gosh, hill concrete. This guy is super hard. It's super hard. Just cognitive transitioning. It's pretty well integrated. So I could I, right now. I could make an argument for SFJ NTP Quadra pretty easily, um, but uh, you know, kind of seems responding. But we know he's super inventorative. I mean, if we were to actually like like erase for sure, like what we know, you know, based on everything that we have here. What we know is is that he's definitely informative. We know that. I mean, it seems pretty concrete just off of that. And uh, S-E and I, definitely T-I-F-E for sure. And talking about his own experience the entire time definitely seems that way. I could, uh, I could make an argument for affiliative or pragmatic. I could get an argument for... Um, uh, I, I could probably make more of an argument for systematic, honestly, uh, than interest, but uh, but let's keep going. The special, I didn't know the special was coming out. Oh, yeah. And then uh, I, I saw the, the oh, Adam Sandler was releasing a stand-up special. I go, yeah. I love Adam Sandler. Oh, yeah. You, know, you I love used me, to but... come see me when we were young. Yeah, yeah. No, please. No, I mean, I, I know all your bits yeah, yeah, backwards yeah. and forwards, man. Yeah. But I was like, I, I freaked out. I probably watched it four times.
You did? Yeah, because I uh, love it. There's yeah. so many good bits. So many. I got a Quest was I got the same. I got a text from nice. Quest Love. He's like, "Have you seen Sandler's thing? It's yeah. unbelievable. You, uh, the way you I shot it was great. It. Yeah. You did different, like little comedy clubs to giant arenas. Yeah, that and was. Yeah, thank you, thank you, because I'm a TIFE user, you know, AF, and I have like a huge memory constantly. You know what I'm saying? It's the fun time, man. Felt. everybody and she uh, she came here to New York with me and she misses her uh, her mom and sister so Jimmy was nice enough to say it was okay to say hi to them you want to go yes they're watching at home ready <laughs> go ahead say hi hi mommy hi Sadie I miss you and I hope you're having a fun time uh, <laughs> Jimmy, I, I'm surprising you with this, but she does uh, a, a, an Adam Sandler impression. All oh, right? you do? Yeah. Well, will you please can, do that for us? Can she look at a particular camera or something like yeah, that? Yeah, just too? look straight ahead. Straight ahead yeah. and go ahead, hit it. <laughs> All right. All right. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> Sorry. How are you? Thank you what's gonna happen yeah well maybe i should clear all the kids out of here how you doing great to see you buddy it's great to see you too and it's a nice that you, you bring your family around yeah. you're a very family oriented man in general absolutely i'm addicted to them i love being with them and uh, when i'm not with them i'm very very depressed how do they like the uh goatee is yeah, and I'm not one of them. I'm very, very depressed. Very S I N E. So yeah, definitely S F J and to be quadra as far as I could tell, but he's very concrete, so it would be E S F J. ISFJ uh, for sure uh, in this regard. Now, if we're gonna look from a comedic standpoint, which one is most likely? It would be through ESFP Shadow uh, for sure. Uh, with calling the transitioning, which would make a lot of sense. And, uh, you know, well, it seems like he's pretty pragmatic. He keeps talking about, you know, doing the right thing by his family. I'm gonna have to put a point down for affiliative, especially for that familial statement he just made. This is not something I grew. I, it's so funny that Brooklyn is so. We, I went over to Brooklyn Bridge and it automatically just grew on me. <laughs> is that right? Yeah, when I go back to Manhattan, it'll go away. I mentioned you were born in Bensonhurst, yeah. which is down. That's actually, I'm from that area. Jason, but I, actually, uh, Kings County Hospital. Kings I was County, born. yeah. I was Maimonides, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, right. And I think we grew up like three or four miles yes, from each yes, other. Yes. And we're almost exactly the same age. V well, I'm older than you, right? I found that out last time. I'm, 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 I don't want to say it, but I, I don't think my kid knows how old I am. <laughs> All right, I'm 52. How old were you when you moved out of Brooklyn? Five. Five years old? Yeah, five. So I moved to New Hampshire. Right. Yeah, yeah. All right, hi, New England. All right, good to see you guys. So we moved to New Hampshire, and I'm, it's first grade, and I'm very nervous about my first day of school, and I say to my dad, I'm scared of the, the, the boys. Nervous, gonna scared. Be nasty to me, and blah, blah, blah. Boys can be nasty to me, S-I. He said, go find the biggest kid and just knock him out. And I was like, knock out the biggest kid? And he's, I said, for what? He goes, for, for being the biggest kid. And I'm like, all right. So he did nothing wrong, but I should knock him out. Knock them out. Let them all know. Just let them know. Mark your turn. So I go. <laughs> Should I do the right thing there? Should I do the right thing because I'm affiliative? Come on. <laughs> Is this really the best way to do things? Systematic? Okay. All right, fine. I'm terrified that I have to do this. I get to school. First day, I'm the biggest kid there. <laughs> and literally, like, 14 uh, New Hampshire kids just beat the living crap out of me. <laughs> You, it sounds like your dad gave you a lot of really great advice. I'll show you this. What? Oh, Jesus, no wonder you're No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, this is what I said. This is, I brought this special because my, my father passed away uh, a while ago, but I stole this. My mother let me take this from his closet. This shows you how Brooklyn, my father. Oh, wow. <laughs> what? That's very Brooklyn. That's really your dad's bell? That really is, yeah. Oh my gosh, did he ever use this? <laughs> I had to use that a few times. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely affiliative for sure, uh, systematic, but uh, cognitive transitioning into ENTP, uh, subconscious, uh, ESFP, uh, 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 unconscious, which are both pragmatic 
and he's able to switch between, he's probably either on meds or somehow medicated or maybe even drunk because he's able to transition very easily, which is why it's been extremely difficult to type him down. But uh, my final judgment on Adam Sandler is that he's an ISFJ, uh, ESFP focused ISFJ, uh, as near as I can tell. So that was a very fantastic one. That's probably one of our top three most difficult ones I've been given. Up there with John Cleese as uh, one of the more harder ones, but we found out after spending an extenuated amount of time on him, uh, INTJ as well uh, in those days. But yeah, definitely ISFJ. And uh, so you don't see very many ISFJ related comedians, but it's fantastic to have the opportunity uh, when we do. So what is next? So, all right, uh, let's see here. Um, let's get down to, here we go. And uh, good old Adam Sandler. Okay, who is next? Uh, next is Hillary Duff. And uh, this is gonna be the last one that I'm going to do uh, tonight. Remember guys, the super chats, the way they are and how this works is, is if I don't get to them, I don't get to them. Higher super chats end up earning them. So this is gonna be the last one I'm doing is uh, Hillary Duff. Um, and, uh, you know, we can kind of go, uh, go back from, you know, maybe next time we'll do some of the past, but I usually don't do that. Uh, but, uh, we kind of keep going and moving on from there. So, um, uh, I mean, ISFJs do go grocery shopping in their pajamas, Heather Bryant. That's actually a very normal thing for them. Just so you guys know, that's like a very, uh, normal thing. So, Okay. Uh, what is, uh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, Lauren Teal is next, actually. My bad. Lauren Teal. Let's do Lauren Teal. So, okay. Lauren Teal. So, Lauren Teal. See, I got any text messages from my wife real quick. Let's double check. Uh, okay. No, okay, let's see here. All right, Lauren Teal. Lauren Teal interview. Uh, percussion podcast, Lauren Teal. Um, gosh, I hope there's like some pretty good videos to go with here because I'm not seeing much here at all. Remember guys, I need to have like an actual video to go off of here. So I guess it's the only thing we got. I would love to revisit those roots, you know? Um, and then obviously the drumline, uh, that was probably the thing that got my foot in the door, at least the conversation started with UNA was the drumline thing. Um, and I think it's cool what we do there. It's that we we take a very active role in the drumline and we make sure that it fits under the umbrella of what we're teaching everywhere. And you know, it's not just like, well, the drumline is its own separate thing taught by a TA or taught by someone outside. It's me and Tracy teaching it to make sure that what we're teaching them there fits in with what we're teaching everywhere. You know what I mean? It's all the same and there's not a difference between what we're asking them to do in regards to the types of sounds and things and percussion ensemble versus what we're doing at the marching band. And it's just more hours that we get to be around them and basically teaching them how we want them to produce these sounds and things. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, a, it's again, that's like one of the things I like. I've, it's totally unrelated, but I, I like animals, as you could see by that Facebook page. And I, I do some volunteering sometimes. And I've gone to places where I volunteer and I feel totally unneeded and it's like, well, why am I going to put the time in here? And there's other places you go and they're so, they have lots for you to do and they want you to be involved and active. And I would much rather. They want you to be involved and they want this and they want that because I'm an SI any user and like I'm initiating over and over again, seem pretty movement, but let's keep going. I'd rather be at a place like that where I feel that my time is needed. You know what I mean? I don't want to go somewhere where it's like, well, Thanks for being here, but we don't need you to be here. Sure. And that's Thanks the thing for I being feel here, but we don't need you to be here. You know, okay, that's very like super high. 
I could I could argue SE as well for that one. Um, so gonna gonna wait for that one, but it's very uh, high uh, extroverted, um, like a high extroverted function for that one. For me, a lot to do, and I like that. So cool. Yeah. And you're split between it was Montevallo and you. Yeah, you know? so I live. I actually live in Birmingham right now, which is uh, kind of the middle of Alabama. And 40 minutes south of there is a, a smaller program called University of Montevallo, um, and I'm the only per percussion teacher there. I just started this past fall. Uh, there are three. There's three students that I was teaching this last year. Two of them were majors. One was a freshman, and one was a fifth year performance major that was on oh. her way out. Yeah, so big, big disparity there. Um, but I think this next year there are three majors coming in, uh, which is, you know, it'd, it'd be good to see that program grow. And that, you know, that's a different experience for me getting to see, you know, I've got UNA where it's a, a little bit more of established and bigger program. And then Montevallo that is quite a bit smaller and at a different, you know, point in its growth. So I get to kind of see both both worlds and see what that's like. And I get to see both worlds because I'm T-I-F-E and S-I-N-E and informed initiating movement and it seems like i'm concrete af while also being a teacher like are we looking at an esfj here i appreciate it so i split my time between them and then when i'm not at those two schools during the week i teach for a guy named brad palmer uh, that wasn't even the guy's question again this is initiating she it's not even the guy's question it's called Double Stop, and basically they go into all the area high schools and middle schools and teach percussion classes, teach like the specialists. So it's not like I'm at one high school and and it's just me building that, but it's a team of us. It's me and a guy named Aaron Locklear. Megan, you might know him. He's from, he just finished his yeah. master's at Eastman. Yep, um, I know him. That's Brad great. Palmer and uh, my friend Hav, we all teach for him and, you know, go into the different schools. So that's a little bit different too. You know, I got a performance degree and never taught... I got a performance degree because, you know, I'm affiliative and I gotta mention my credentials because hashtag credibility, right? But, you know, I'm also like TIFE at the same time, you know, sharing my thinking and talking about the caring and all of the teaching, right? Middle school and elementary age school until I moved to Alabama and that was my first experience of that was last year and that was a whole different thing. So it's my days literally go from sixth grade all the way up to like, I'm teaching students that are literally older than me, you know, teaching them right. percussion lessons. So it's good. But the thing that I find surprising is how many things and themes I see across that spectrum of ages. And, and I learn things from teaching sixth graders that I can take to my university or I can take to the drum corps. And it's all, it, it helps me grow. I learned things from my sixth graders that I could take from the drum corps, et cetera. Uh, learning things uh, that I personally get to uh, that I could take to other people and be helpful to other people. It's also an example of uh, uh, S-I-N-E, but I can actually, I, I could say S-E-N-I there, but not really sure about that. It's like saying that I, I can take it. It's like I, I should take it there for the most part, uh, but uh, we'll see. I mean, I could even argue abstract there, so. She's a little bit more, I mean, right now, like mentally, I'm kind of bouncing back and forth between ESFJ and ENFJ is kind of where I'm bouncing back and forth right now. So let's let's keep going. I feel as, an, as a teacher and educator, just being in all those different places. Um, and then when I'm not doing those things, I go on the weekends, I get my fill of the drum, I go to Troopers or uh for some reason, I, I like driving, and I drive to Indiana once a month uh, to work with Center Grove's uh, front ensemble. I just can't see the direct initiating control. There's just no control there. It's just constantly coming out of her over and over and over again. It's just movement, 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 initiating new points. And I'm just going to keep informing you, telling you these stories over and over and over again from my own personal experience. Uh, indoor, which I never did indoor when I was eligible or whatnot. So this was like my first experience with indoor was with the school but i really appreciate so my first experience this is my first experience with indoor it's s-i-n-e so yeah definitely sfj ntp quadra for sure and form initiating uh movements very affiliative so yep she's an esfj there's no point in going further on this this woman is an esfj so fantastic lauren teal's esfj and we're going to finish the night with uh Hillary Duff. Hillary Duff it is. So let's see how that goes. Um, I was wondering if I'd ever be asked to do Hillary Duff, but uh, let's see here. 
Let's do a nice rainbow color, right? Hillary for president, right? Hillary Duff instead of like Hillary Clinton, right? Hillary Duff, awesome. So, okay, and uh, let's see here. Uh, Hillary uh, Duff interview, okay. All right, full interview, Zach Zang show. Missing cell phone reveals about the Zero Bar uh, reboot, okay. I have guardian angels out there. Zach Sang the gang right now, hanging out in the studio. The one, the only, Hillary Dove. Oh. Hello. Hello, hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How was your good. day today? What was your day like? Oh, my gosh. Um, I dropped my child off at school this morning. Ooh. So I was like the, like, get up, get dressed, pack the lunch, <laughs> feed the kid, get to school. Um, I had a meeting midday. I had Ooh. a workout. Very nice. And uh, and I came to you. Now, what kind of a good day. What, what kind of mom are you at school when you when you drop Luca off? Like I, I'm assuming you're the cool mom, right? Very direct. You know, I had a day, I had a kid. Here's my plan. You know, obviously, it seems like a J type, uh, not a P, not not letting her day happen to her. She is happening to her day. It is more indicative of a J type. But let's see. Uh, well, a lot of the moms are cool, to be honest. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know exactly what you mean. It's a slight transition right now because he just got into a new class, so he's okay. like staying a little bit longer. He has like two two new teachers. Got it. But he's done good, so I'm kind of just I try to just go. My son's done good, even though I'm asked how if if I'm a good mother and what my experience is for a mother. I'm just going to talk about my son instead because you know I'm extroverted sensing and I'm living the motherly experience through my son, not actually my own experience as a mother. Okay, fair enough. Go off of him, like. But you see a lot of parents still having to sit in the classroom because their parent, their kids are like having uh, full blown panic attacks that so their, their parents are leaving. Preschool oh. age, yeah, 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 yeah. And it depends. Like some days, Luca's like, I don't like school. I don't <laughs> like it. And I'm like, you do like it. Or I try to, I try to not say that. I'm like, no. You do like it because you know, T I F E S E N I, and I'm an obvious S T P N F J quadra to like. You know, can't save my life. LOL. Oh, like school is so fun. He's like, I don't like it. I'm like, okay, well, you have to go, <laughs> and I'll see you at two. Like that's what it is. So you know, is he doing a full day at school? You have to go, and I'll see you at two because that's just how it is. Because I'm direct initiating control and S E N I and T I F E. Sorry, get over yourself. You have to go. So. Not a full day. Like Close. he he does only three days a week, and okay. he goes from like eight thirty until one thirty one day, and then another day, like two days a week. I did after school, so it's like cool. sports and science and killing it. Just I'm just full blown mom over here. Yeah, well, <laughs> my thing is like right now. I swear I have a real job too, no, but the, the, my thing is like, how do you do both? Because right now you're in the full mode and relaunching your entire music career. Yeah. By the way, incredible album, great single. You know, breathe in, breathe out. The, the first single sparks i mean you're doing everything and obviously you're still raising your son challenging at times oh yeah yeah but i think any mom would tell you that it's challenging even if they didn't have a job of course <laughs> i think, I I think get a any mom actually, would tell you I because i'm affiliative yeah. so, um there's a there's a balance and it is hard like i miss a lot but i know like, i've been working since i was 11 yeah. so that's a big part of who i am and i think that if i didn't have that i would just be lost you know so it feels good I, I feel so lucky to be wow I feel so lucky to do this because I just initiated another point you know because like I'm super direct and initiating control because I'm an in charge type TIFE SCP and FJ Quadra which means I'm either an ESTP or I am an ENFJ one of the two I think it's very likely we're looking at ENFJ here let's be honest I mean that's what I think be where I am now and actually have like put out my record that I you know the conversation has gone on for a couple of years and the timing just didn't didn't seem right and now Lizzie is turning 30 and for me I, you know, she was everybody's best friend and she was there for such pivotal moments in their preteen life. 
and entering your 30s is a really big deal. And I think it's, per I mean, I think Disney agrees, but I think it's just the right time for her to step back in and to have her go along with you in your 30s. And Oh, you know, have her go along with you in your 30s, you know, because we're affiliative and I'm here to help you with my super high FE and whatnot. And like, I can't even be more affiliative than that. And here's the outcome because, you know, 30s is the big outcome for you. And then uh, obviously I'm an ENFJ. So yeah, there you go. Hillary Duff is everyone's favorite ENFJ, apparently. So yeah, there you go. Very, very... ENFJ, if I do say so myself, I would say ISTP focused at ENFJ, not so INFP focused with their overly affiliative academic uh, upbringing, etc. You know what I'm saying, right? So anyway, folks, uh, gonna have to be ENFJ. I mean, the rest of the things we looked at said ENFJ. So I mean, like the other interviews, she's an ENFJ. Anyway, uh, thank you all for coming. We went an additional 20 minutes over on this particular uh, episode, but it's great to have you folks. Um, if you uh, super chatted and your super chats didn't make it, I've got the list right here. Um, so uh, if you guys want uh, for next time we do this, if you have existing super chats here, I'd be okay with you guys uh, potentially uh, adding on to them or other people can uh, add on to them for the next time. Uh, I'm fine with that. This information is not going away here anyway, as near as I could tell. So I'm just gonna alt print screen anyway. So, and then uh, we'll just kind of pick it up from there. But uh, if other super chats come in then they just come in and whatnot. So uh, it is what it is. So. Uh, we'll just do that just for the next episode because so many people had it, so many extra ones uh, and whatnot. Um, and then the episode after that probably won't do that. But hey, you know, I'm feeling like in a nice guy mood right now, if you know what I'm saying. But uh, otherwise, folks, eight rules for ES for loving ESTPs dropped. Um, shout out to uh, Flow State and also uh, Eric Strauss for talking with famous people. I made that lecture uh, specifically for them. So if you want to uh, get in on some interesting uh, action and YouTube drama, I suggest you watch uh, Eight Rules for Loving ESTPs. And it's kind of interesting because as I had made it very clear, I am married to an ESTP. So this lecture also kind of hits right at home as well. Uh, so check out that lecture, it was just dropped last night. The next public lecture that I will be releasing is How to Social Engineer INFPs, and I am hoping Season 19, Episode 2 drops, or uh, Season 19, Episode 5, which is How to Cognitively Develop ENFJs and Helping ENFJs uh, Reach Enlightenment and the like, uh, that uh, I believe should be dropping tomorrow as well. Uh, and uh, plenty more uh, walking and driving lectures to come in the meantime. So anyway, thank you all for being members of uh, the audience uh, for the CSJ community. And if you haven't been on our Discord, go to csjoseph.life forward slash social, join our Discord so you can get in on that Q&A action. And uh, we'll probably be doing a Discord only event sometime this month as well. Uh, but again, thank you all for uh, being members of, uh, of my audience. Uh, love you all. Thank you all for the financial support as well as we continue to uh, build this company. And I am meeting with developers on Friday to talk about our app and trying to get a, a nice little web app made for everyone's for the CSJ test, hoping to have um, the alpha maybe this December and we'll uh, open it up to uh, some, uh, some patrons and then uh, the beta hopefully will start in January as well. And hopefully we can go live by the end of Q1 uh, for that. Who knows? Uh, but it'll be a really interesting cutting edge uh, psychological typing application that you won't find anywhere else. So anyway, uh, with that being said, folks, uh, thank you all for coming and you all have a good night. See you guys uh, next time. By the way, a Patreon live lecture, I believe, is scheduled for this Thursday. Uh, be there uh, for the live lecture and the Q&A that follows that lecture as well. Uh, otherwise... I'll see you guys uh, next time and uh, have a good night.